Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Vormithrax, and I'm here to play some Across the Obelisk. Brand new game just released this 1.0 version yesterday, after, as it says on the screen, about a year of early access. And um, we're going to have some fun with it. So, if you've never heard of Across the Obelisk, think mashup of Slay the Spire and Darkest Dungeon with co-op. Uh, that's that's kind of the big elements, I think, that fairly well describe what you're going to see. Uh, there's four characters in the game, which we can see the backs of <laughs> as they stare into the distance at the obelisk. Uh, it's the kind of a classic uh, RPG D&D matchup or MMO matchup. We've got uh, the warrior, we've got the magic user, we've got a cleric, and we've got a ranger. Um, I believe all four are always in play, regardless of whether you play solo or if you play co-op. Co-op's going to be a big thing in this one, I'm hoping, maybe. If it's fun enough, we might be able to play this in our community co-op game on the weekends with a, a few other folks. Um, I think it'd be a blast to do that, but uh, we'll give it a try in solo as a first look and uh, see if I think it's fun and if you guys seem to enjoy it, then uh, we'll go from there. Um, yeah, I played it a little bit last night uh, before, before sleepy time. So I've got a little bit of experience in the game. I have not done a full run. I got through the first map basically, and there's a chain of maps, which you'll see here in a little bit. Um, and that gave me enough information that I've got a pretty strong grasp of the interface and how things are going to work in general. But, uh, there are a number of things I still don't know about the game and, and especially it's made of progression elements and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's looking really, really good. I, I like the, uh, the, the art presentation style is very slick. The interface gives me all the information that I might want. Uh, I eventually tracked everything down that I had questions about when I was trying to figure out, uh, how things worked and information I needed in order to make educated decisions in game. Uh, that's always wonderful to see. So we're going to jump right into some across the obelisk solo play, which is a bit much <laughs> co-op is actually probably in addition to being fun with friends. I mean, to be chattering and, and doing things with your buddies, that's great, but, um, almost necessary. Uh, you can obviously do solo as I'm about to do, but realize as opposed to slay the spire, you got four different characters, four different decks, Four different people that have their own equipment. That's a lot of information to process and keep track of. Um, I'll, I'll muddle my way through it. You'll, you'll see me do it here in a minute. But I can definitely see where having four humans, each controlling one of the characters, and with them able to focus on just that character, its gear build out, its card deck, and how it's built, and how to utilize it proper, appropriately, could be very beneficial. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to hopefully getting some multiplayer going if I can talk some of these scallywags in the community into uh, joining me for some uh, some Across the Obelisk. All right, that's enough chit-chat chatter. Let's, uh, let's jump right in. We're going to say play, and we're going to say adventure mode. I got to get a character to rank three to do Obelisk Challenge. Every game will be different as you progress through the void trying to reach the Obelisk. Fully random roguelike adventure. And uh, then we have weekly challenges, apparently. Compete against other players in a weekly challenge. A new set of rules and fixed characters awaits to see who can get to the top score. All right, we're going to do adventure mode. Discover new characters, unlock cards, and fight evil bosses in this roguelite adventure. Unveil the history of Senenthia. All right, so there's my existing line or match that I did last night. And uh, they're hanging out mid-adventure currently. We're going to do a create new game so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, so I think it's going to give me the full... Oh, no, because I did stuff in my other game. Now I have options in this one. Oh, okay. Uh, so team selection. At the end of an adventure, all the characters in your group will get experience points. Each rank level will award you perk points. You can spend these points buying upgrades for them. So this is part of the meta progression. I didn't have this option in my first game because I hadn't, uh, I hadn't meta progressed. So, uh, okay. We'll hit continue. So team selection. Drag the characters you want to use in this game. Some attacks can only target front, back, or middle units. Uh, oh, I see. So we have unlocks of different versions. Uh, warrior scouts, mages, and healers is what we're calling them. Instead of uh, rangers and clerics, we got scouts and uh, healers. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, it doesn't mention what the unlock option is. I guess that's one thing I would like to know, but I'm assuming it's probably just the progression. Uh, yeah, the progression ranks. Uh, uh, so I can change positioning now, can I? All right. Uh, that, that looks fine. Warrior in front, ranger backing him up, mage and uh, healer in the uh, the back row. That's pretty standard. So what what does this do? Wow, more buttons, more buttons. So if for folks that don't know about these types of games, this is uh this is meta progression stuff. Meaning, you play a game, 
you, you finish the game and your progress into that game will have unlocked various things or given you rank levels. Once you're out of the game proper and you're on this meta screen, it allows you to progress the abilities of your characters and or to unlock more powerful characters you can take into the adventure with you. Um, in that way, if the game or the challenge is too hard initially, eventually just by keeping on, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, you'll accumulate points, you'll unlock abilities or po more powerful new characters, and then you'll be able to push further and further into the game on each attempt. Uh, so it's not a one time through type of thing. It's a play through, get some small advancements to do, to increase your meta progression, play again, advance a little bit again, play again. That kind of thing. And it hopefully has enough variety in the gameplay that you want to do it over and over and over again. Um, so we're going to find out. But yeah, I didn't see any of this in my first playthrough because we hadn't done any progression. So uh, apparently we've got points. So we'll go with Magnus first, I guess. Uh, so he's rank two, getting close to rank three. All you're here is gain perk points playing the game. And apparently we have a whole bunch of stuff. We got uh, general category, physical, elemental, and mystical. We can export, we can import perk sets, you can modify your perks before the game begins, and on the first town with some restrictions. You can also save and load different perk configurations before the game begins. All right, so you can do different build outs for the character classes, so you can try different uh, strategies uh, using these various bonuses that you've applied. All right, so, man, what are these things? So it's a straight linear column going down, so max hit point increases... Each time by four, looks like it's by four each time, and you have to have a certain amount of points already spent in order to be able to take the next uh, lower rank. So basically it's I can get some more hit points, I can increase my resistances, I can start with a little more gold, or I can have some more shards, which is kind of an in-game um, upgrade payment plan. <laughs> so you can transmute cards from one version to a stronger or different version. Uh, so that's general. All right, so physical, our choices are slash damage, pierce damage, blunt damage, and blocking, additional blocking. Elemental, so the, the basics, the four different elemental types, fire damage bonus, cold damage bonus, lightning damage bonus, and shield block bonus. And then uh, mystical, these are the other damage types. We've got holy, we've got shadow, and we've got mind. So there's... Three elemental types of damage, and then there's three kind of mystical types of damage. Um, and then we have a heal. Let's see. So for a Bully Boy here, uh, I mean, more hit points would be good. Resistances, gold shards. I don't know. He has a lot of slashing attacks. Let's do slash damage bonus on him. Confirm perk assignment. So this is just costing me one... All right, um, we got two perk points total. Let's do, let's do some block. All right, so he's all done. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about saving any slots or anything like that. I'll exit him, so his points are spent. Uh, next up is our ranger. Let's do uh, piercing damage. Why do these party members... Oh, okay, it's showing me other, other party members that already have the particular perk. I guess that's important for especially things like these so you know where your bonuses might accumulate to. Uh, and then no elemental, no mystical. I think I'm going to give him some more hit points. He's a little light. Next up, do, 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 the mage, Evelyn. So, Evelyn, where are we going to focus you? A lot of options here. I think we're going to stick with a with a, a traditional elemental style mage. So, let's go with extra fire damage. And I uh, don't think those will help much. Let's go with fire and lightning. We'll, uh, we'll make a glass cannon out of our mage. A lot of forward damage projection, but not a lot of defense. We'll have to keep her up with our, uh, our healer back here. All right, healer. So, let's see. We'll do heals done plus one. And I'm thinking maybe get him some, some self-defense. Yeah, let's get him some self-defense. A little bit of block. 
All right, we have spent all of our perk points. Let's begin our adventure. It all started on the princess's 16th Oops, birthday. sorry about the audio being so low. Didn't realize it had dropped that much. When suddenly, a burst of energy all right, we're going to skip this. <laughs> here's, here's what it said. Princess mysteriously vanishes with the kingdom's primary mage. And uh, tracks lead towards uh, an obelisk that is activated off in the distance. And uh, the king is offering a reward for anybody that can uh, locate and recover the princess. So we start way back here. And uh, we have to march our way across the map. So this is the Sanenthia Obelisk. Uh, similar to Slay the Spire, if you're familiar with that game, we have a bunch of node paths that we can choose to take. Um, they will go through different types of things. So if we look at the map legend here, we can see we have combat locations, events, card nodes, crafter nodes, a map transition point, article shop, rest node, character location, quest end, and a region boss. So if you'll notice on the far right, we have a region boss encounter followed by a map transition. This literally takes you to a whole other map, similar in size to this one. Um, and I, I made it to there in my test game, and then I stopped. So I, I went through that that section there. A whole new map loads up. I don't know how many of those are chained in a row. I know there's at least two of this size that you have to go through. And I don't know if there's a third, fourth, fifth, 70th. <laughs> I don't know how far it goes. Um, we'll, we'll hopefully find out. Uh, but we got to pick our path, basically. So we're, we're starting here. We're going to head up into the town. We'll be able to do a few things in the town. I earned a few uh, supply points in my, my earlier adventure that we'll be able to use to increase some of the uh, options in town. We got a little bit of gold. We got a little bit of uh, crystal. So as you can see, gold used to buy equipment, remove cards, and complete objectives and some events. Crystals, shards, that's what they're called, shards. Used to craft and transmute cards. Um, and I've unlocked a number of cards in my earlier playthrough. So we'll have a few things available to us that uh, you may not see initially in your own first playthrough. And then there's also uh, useful items that you find during your adventure. So this is things where like quest objects, Things that we have to carry to another location will be listed up here. Uh, current score is zero for this run. We've got a Tome of Knowledge, which is pretty good. Uh, you can come in here and you can look at all the cards, which is always awesome. Lots of cards available. That's just for the uh, Warrior set, by the way. <laughs> so we got six pages of, what is that, 18 cards per page. And I think some of these are just an item and then an upgraded version and then an upgraded version, uh, possibly. I haven't actually looked through it in detail. There you go. It's in alphabetical order, looks like. Uh, five, five, five and a half pages. And then we've got the, uh, the ranger set of cards. We've got the mages and we've got the healers. And there's general enchantments, boons, and injury cards. I had some broken bones. Yeah, we've unlocked the broken bones card. Notice we've got a little glowy lock symbol. So a lot of these are still locked because I have not uh, unlocked them during my playthrough. I apparently got frightened and I got a broken bone during my other playthrough. Uh, but the information is really well presented. So, I mean, you can look at the detail of a card. So when I look at the Child of Storm card, you can see off to the right of the card's screen, it details all of the abilities, letting you know what each symbol means and what each ability does. I can right-click it for more detailed information. So I can see it all in one glance in a nice blowed-up version. And I can also see the two different upgrade paths for it. So this is the base card. If I use my crystals in town or a few other options, uh, locations to uh, transmute a card, I can turn it into this version or this version. Um, and it'll usually highlight what changes between the versions when you have those options. So <clears throat> yeah, you'll notice the, uh, the stats change slightly in certain areas. So this is a two, that's a three, and so on. Um, but yeah, good information presentation, really cleanly designed. I like the art style. It's very colorful. Um, yeah, we got items as well. well I'm getting there. <laughs> so we got stats, we got cards, we got items. Uh, interesting. I'm not sure what this is. I think this indicates the map it might be found on. Something like that. I think that's what these are. Doesn't really say what this little square thing here is, but it looks like a map indicator to me. Doesn't mention it here either. Whatever. Uh, there's a glossary of all of the uh, the terms, the game curses, auras, effects, and so on. So if you've got uh, vitality, you can see gain hit points and max hit points plus five per charge of vitality. You remove one charge at the start of the turn. It's an aura effect. Uh, so yeah, 
you can find most of the things in here. It's really well presented. Uh, so that's the uh, the Toma knowledge. I haven't really looked at combat stats. I guess it's per run. We don't have any yet. Uh, what else we got? You can get our character information over here, including uh, seeing what their deck looks like. 15 cards, five uh, cards each in three rows. See the levels and traits for the character. Basically, when he levels up, I'll get to pick an either or. I can pick one side or the other to gain a card type to add to my deck. So it's another way to uh, differentiate a particular class as you're playing through the adventure. You might do uh, this one, then this one, then this one, then this one on one run, but then do this one, this one, this one, this one on another run, whatever. Shows their equipment cards. Basically, there's five slots for equipment, and you're only allowed to have one item per slot. There will be times in the adventure where we open a chest and a, a bevy of items will be shown and the characters get to decide which items they would like to slot into which locations. The character sheet, and they'll show this as well for enemies while you're fighting. You can click on an enemy and get this sheet to come up. It'll show all their main stats, their current global modifiers, their resistances, which is very important. You always want to match up a, a damage type against something with low resistance for that type. Uh, auras and curses, active effects, immunity, and then the perks that they have purchased. So you can see the specific perks. A lot of good info. All right, that's enough of interface stuff. Let's actually jump into uh, playing the game. I think that fairly well describes most of the info we have access to here. So let's head off to the, uh, the town. Okay, so this is the town. Basically, it's just an interface for a few locations we can visit. So we got, what, five? We have an armory to buy equipment for my heroes. We have an altar to upgrade cards and transform those into more powerful versions using our supply of shards. We have the Zingarian cart. Pay gold to the beautiful Zingara and get a divination round. I think that shows... If you have enough money, grant you a divination card round. Everyone will benefit from this divination I have the chance to obtain better cards. I, I'm not 100% sure what this does. <laughs> I haven't actually used it yet. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try it sometime. I don't have 400 bucks to spend on it. So we won't worry about that for now. Uh, then we've got, whoops, back out of there. Exit. Uh, this is the church. I can remove cards from the deck. So this is the way of thinning your deck out. So you can come in here and you can remove cards. Um, it's very important. Hopefully we get options in the actual moving through the map section to also remove cards, not just here at the start of the game. Um, I haven't seen a single one of those options in my first playthrough, but I picked a pretty narrow path uh, to get to the far side of the map. So I, I don't know which ones to look out for that might give me an option to winnow the deck. You got to winnow your deck. If you just keep adding cards and adding cards and adding cards, any, uh, any, any card player... Uh, out there for these kinds of games knows that's not necessarily a good thing. You want a lean, mean, killing machine when you do your deck building. The less cards you have, the more likely you are to draw specific card combos uh, that are very powerful that you try to work towards. Um, anybody who played Slay the Spire or Magic the Gathering or any of that kind of stuff knows. So you don't go in with a million card deck. You want the smallest, meanest deck you can get so that you can constantly rotate through certain powerful combos. And knowing what combos are possible and getting those cards to uh, to intersect and be available is very important. Uh, so yeah, we have an option to remove cards. Currently, our deck consists of a Captain's Howl card, two intercepts, four defends, an enrage, a bunch of fast strikes because he's a warrior, a barricade card, and a couple of Ren cards that deal damage as well as apply a bloodletting or a bleed effect. Um, which is really fun when you're fighting things that don't bleed because <laughs> most of the damage is that bleed effect. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's the nature of the beast. So I'm just going to stick with the default decks. We're not going to muddle around or fiddle with any of this stuff. We'll, we'll stay with what we start with, but, uh, we can check all of them. So we've got adrenaline, deflect, tracker, hunter's mark, slice, aimed shot, and rupture, cold spark, fire blast, mana gem, charge battery, elemental wards, frost bolts, and transmissions, and Reginald. That's foresight. Basically, it lets you see what cards the enemy is going to be using. Um, healing Rain, which uh, is really great if you're fi fighting fire enemies especially. Uh, barrier, which is protection, of course. Divine Grace, Flash, Heal, and Holy Smite. So, that's our set of cards. We're not going to uh, fiddle with those at the moment. And then we have the Magic Forward. Craft cards for your deck. So we can actually craft new cards using our crystals. So, we've got uh, rarity options and so on. So, if we go to Megas, it's only going to show me the cards available for the fighter class. 
I can say, all right, show me the uh, the three cost cards only. And so those are the three cost card choices. Uh, show me one cost, but uh, only rare cards, none unlocked. I've got a single uncommon card. Sharing is caring. Split your, your block between all your party members. Oh, nope, between one other hero. So if I have 15 block, 20 block, let's say I have 20 block, I can uh, split it so I have 10 and my, my friend has 10. Uh, I don't think I have anything else unlocked. Yeah, none of this really high-level stuff. Uh, so, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty good system. It, uh, it should be pretty quick. Once you're familiar with the basic cards in each deck, it should uh, move fairly easily. Um, again, we're not going to mess with this right now, but it also has the, uh, the classic information here showing you the average energy cost for your deck. So the majority of my cards are single-cost cards, or one-point cards. Oops, right there. I only have a few zero point cost cards currently in the deck, as it shows here. Zero cost cards, most of them are one cost. And then a few are two cost. Uh, average energy cost is one. And you can save and load the decks, so that's all nice once you get familiar and know what's going on. And there you go, that is the town. So I have some town upgrade points. I earned three points earlier, so I can come into the town now. This is again part of the meta progression, so as you play, you earn these supply points. And then in future plays, you'll be able to unlock town upgrades that will make your future runs a little faster and easier. All right. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I think I might just save my points for the next run, but uh, there are choices. So we can't pick these lower ones until I believe we've spent three points and then this will unlock. So I got to pick three of these basically. Uh, common cards available for crafting increased to two. Alter cost of transforming cards reduced. Removing cards in the starting town is free. That, that sounds pretty good. The Zingarian cart cost of divination rounds is reduced. Unlock the ability to re-roll items in the town armory. If you don't like what items are listed, you can re-roll. Currency retention at the end of the game is increased. So apparently you get to hold over the money. Uh, I'm going to leave all these alone for now. We're just going to play completely default, just like uh, it was my first run and I had to unlock some options. <laughs> but that's what you've got as availability. So you got five buildings or five upgrade buildings and then the town upgrades <clears throat> for the meta progression. Let's go ahead and head into the actual dungeons and adventures. <clears throat> All right. So this should look familiar to Slay the Spire fans and a few other games that have copied the type. Oh, I actually get to see what's there. we got the corn guys. And I can't see these two, huh? All right. Uh, but we can pick a path. So we got a fight. We've got uh, an event. Fight. Riverside Camp, character events, character. I think the character event, I mean, it's character event, character event, character event, character event. So you're going to hit a character event no matter what path you take. I guess you could avoid that one. You could technically go around that character event. Uh, all the other ones are blocked, though. So if we went up and then down and around, I don't know if I want to avoid the character events. I haven't seen enough of them yet. But, um, yeah, we also have uh, an altar here, which I believe... I think it lets you modify your cards with your crystals at that location. Um, ah, that's an event, an uncommon event, so it's green colored, so that would be a common event. Got it. Well, there's an uncommon event. Let's kind of lean that way. So let's go north, fight the corn guys, and then we'll kind of decide there. I can't, oh, I can backtrack. I can go from here back up to here and then that way. All right, uh, yeah, let's go this way. Okay, so things are happening. <laughs> so various effects are being applied to our characters. Reinforce got automatically added. Slashing, piercing, and blunt resistances are now plus 30%. Uh, we've also got a fast ability, speed plus two. Uh, I really like the interface. It's really well done, presents the information very, very cleanly. So at the top of the screen, we have the order. It's done by speed numbers. So we have 21 speed for our ranger, uh, archer guy. So he's going to be first in line, followed by our warrior, our mage, the corn guys, and our cleric last currently. Now, if I can do something to lower these guys' speed, they'll drop below the cleric and he'll shuffle forward. And I've had occasions where I've gotten multiple turns before enemies have gotten to go because of changes to speed ratings. Um, but once you take your turn, however many points it costs, it'll it'll drop you to that new position. 
Um, so you'll see what happens there. This indicator is a kill them fast bonus indicator. So if I kill them all in round one, I get that performance bonus. It's an excellent result, and I get a plus 50% gold, plus 50%. I don't know what to call that, the star number. Experience? I think it's experience. And then plus two cards tier. I believe that is the reward at the end of the fight. I'm going to get two upgraded cards in addition to the chance for an upgraded card. Something like that. If it takes me two rounds, I get that. And if it takes me three rounds, I get that. Any further than that, I don't get any bonuses. I still get rewards, but I don't get these enhanced bonuses. So hopefully we can kill them within these time periods. Uh, this shows that they've got one card each that they're going to be playing against me on their turns. And with the uh, certain abilities I have, I can actually see what they're planning on doing. You can see their hit points. You can click on them, left click to get the full detail screen. So we can see that they're more susceptible to blunt than they are slashing or piercing. They have negative resistance to blunt. They're also uh, not good against cold. So blunt and cold are mostly what we want to be using. Anything else is fine, but we'll get bonuses to damage for blunt and cold. And then we can also uh, right click on them, which right now won't show anything, but this is where you go if you want to see detailed info on the cards they're casting against you. So if they cast something, the information goes by really quickly when they do. And if you're curious what they just did, you can come in here to see what card they used against you. Um, so that's that section, that section. You can see our character portraits and info, same thing. We can get our own details here by clicking and seeing what our, our deck looks like. Um, hit point values in number form, in bar form. The number here is the amount of energy that they have. And I think their max possible energy is the green. But these each currently have one energy uh, to use to spend on buying things. Where the ranger's got four and he's got one as well. And then effects that they've got currently active. Their hit point bars, of course. Uh, this is telling you how many energy points you have to spend. So before you click this, you, you've got a, an instant notifier that, hey, you've got energy left still. Um, so that number four equates to that. This is the equipment that character is equipped with. So he has the ranger armor as his armor piece, and it gives him speed plus one, which is where that ability is coming from. He's getting plus two, I think, from... He's got another one from somewhere else. Uh, through natural ability or something, I forget where. <clears throat> but there's five different items that can be equipped total. Five different slots, basically. So you can have uh, different bonuses you can attach based on what equipment you pick up. Um, so this is... I think it's draw five at the beginning of your turn. There's ten cards still on the deck, and he's got five out. So that's the total of 15 cards, and he's drawing five. Uh, so we got five cards to choose from. Card format's pretty familiar for these types of games. We highlight one. That's the cost to cast it. So Expert Tracker is basically a free card I can use. It's cast on a specific hero, so I put it on one of my characters, anyone I want, myself or the other three. And you can see that it grants one Inspire, draw one extra card per charge. Since it's one, I'll get draw one card at the start of the turn. So if I cast it on my wolf guy who's next in line... When his turn starts, he'll draw another card that he'll be able to use. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, I'll immediately, when I cast it on him, we'll get to look at five cards in his deck, um, and we'll be able to discard any that we choose. So if I want to go combat heavy, I might toss out some uh, defense cards so that I make sure that the, uh, the attack cards come to the front. And then I can choose to discard any of those five I want to uh, kind of tailor the deck. Uh, we've got Hunter's Mark. I'm not going to go through the details in every single card. I'm just doing it for this guy as a first time. Uh, Hunter's Mark applies Mark. So damage taken is plus one per charge. So we're going to be adding three charges to one target. That basically means that they're going to take additional damage from all attacks and uh, removes uh, prevents one stealth per charge. So stealth is a way of avoiding uh, combat attacks. So this will counter stealth abilities <clears throat> as well as... Uh, Whoa. Uh, one second. Very loud noises downstairs. Be right back.
Okay, well that was interesting. Let's turn off that little window. Okay. <laughs> so that was um that was a very large heavy uh, jug of detergent taking a flying dive off of a shelf to smash into some pots and my 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 washing machine <laughs> and then hit the floor. Luckily it didn't break the jug open. I didn't have anything to clean up. But man, that was loud. No idea why it decided to do that. There was uh, nothing running downstairs, no vibrations that should have had it move off that shelf. Weirdness. We got the poltergeist running around. All right. Uh, what the hell was I talking about? <laughs> uh, Hunter's Mark basically puts a target on. It puts a, a mark on a target, makes them easier to kill. Aim shot, pretty straightforward, two points, and uh, I can hit any monster I want with a ranged attack. Deals 15 damage. Now, one thing I want to note, notice that it says 15 damage, but if you look at the portraits of the enemies you can target, it says 14 damage. The reason for that is these guys have uh, piercing 10% resistance. So they're somewhat resistant to piercing. So we're losing a point due to that resistance value. So don't use this as the number damage that's going to be done based on their hit points. Make sure you're looking at the, uh, the portraits to see what the actual damage is going to land. Uh, slice front monster only for the front rank does nine damage, eight in our case due to resistances and then another aim shot. Uh, so let's, uh, let's, let's do some shooty shooty. Uh, what do we got? Four points. Let's go ahead and do the tracker on, uh, on our bully boy here. So it shows us the five cards. Uh, we're going to need a little defense because we're not going to kill these guys fast enough. Let's get rid of... They've got some ranged attacks too. They're probably going to go for my back, back rank. Um, let's say no to that one. And no to that one. I'm going to keep the rest. <clears throat> All right, so uh, we still got our four points. So I could do two aim shots, or I could put the mark on somebody, do an aim shot, a slice, and put a mark. I think I'm going to do that. Let's let's get this front guy down as quick as possible. I think between the ranger and the warrior, we might be able to drop this front guy. Uh, so we'll mark him, we'll slice him, and we'll aim shot him. And we are out of energy points. We will end our turn. All right, Megas. <clears throat> Magnus. <laughs> so we got different options here. We're going to go ahead and do a captain's howl. It affects all monsters. It applies slow. It's going to slow them down uh, by one, which will bring them even with my mage. And it's also going to make them vulnerable. Uh, their resistances will be minus five per charge. Only one charge, so 5%. Uh, but that'll help us do damage. So it's a free card to cast. So we'll do that. So they are now slowed and vulnerable. And this first one is marked. He's going to take three extra damage. And he's only got 13 hit points left, so he's an easy kill. Unfortunately, I only have Fast Strike, which is going to do 12, not 13. And I have no other negative effects, so that sucks. And I can put a... I, this will kill him. It'll do 6 immediately, and then we'll do Bleed Damage that'll drop him. Uh, so we could do that, and then just ignore him. Because uh, that Bleed will apply before he gets his turn. So he'll be dead if we do this. So 4 points to spend... Yeah, let's go ahead and rend the front monster. Notice it puts the skull and crossbone here. And that's because they it the, it's telling you in that form that that, that thing is dead uh, when its turn starts. So it's nothing, nothing to worry about now. It's not going to get any actions or any cards played. All right, so we can intercept. This is basically giving six uh, block points to anybody um, for zero cost. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna block for my mage. So she now has six block, prevent six damage. Uh, there's there's like block and shield, and I'm a little fuzzy on them. I believe block will block physical attacks as well as the elemental strikes, whereas shield, which provides a similar function, will also block, I think, I'm not 100%, but I believe it'll block um, the, the mind, dark, and uh, holy attacks because uh, it's magical protection instead of physical. <clears throat> All right, what do we got? Two points left, so two of the remaining cards. Let's go ahead and uh, defend myself. And if I enrage, I'll draw a card and gain two points. That sounds fun. Let's do that. So I can do both of these as well. I don't need to do this because he's already going to die, so we will uh, defend self again. 
Okay, time for uh, for our mage. So we got cold, 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 <laughs> which is good. Notice it says deal 14 ice, but it's showing 20, 16, and 16. Um, this is 20 because of this, the mark, putting extra damage on him. Um, Elemental Ward grants six shield, gain one block per charge to start around, then remove all charges. Can't be purged. No, nah, see, it says gain block. I don't, I don't understand the real distinction between the shield and the block. Uh, I guess because it, it allows uh, different effects and negation and such. Whatever. Uh, plus we also get um, insulate, so fire, cold, and lightning resistance go up. Uh, we won't have to worry much about that. Charge battery. This one is interesting. So you deal three electrical damage. Then you apply two spark, which means that um, it's going to lower their lightning resistance. And it deals one lightning damage per charge to each side. So it's going to lower his lightning resist and it's going to shock the two adjacent enemies for a couple of points. And then I also gain uh, an extra charge, an extra energy per charge at the start of the turn. Uh, so four points, let's go, uh, yeah, let's just start working on the second guy. So he now has chill, low cold resistance. So we'll hit him with, uh, I think we'll just hit him with another one. That gets him pretty close to dead and we still have our, our healer to go. We might be able to drop two guys before they get their turn. Oh yeah. Cold Spark. I should have used that first. I screwed up. <clears throat> Forgot about Cold Spark because its effect is uh, based on how many cards are in your hand. <laughs> Saving it for last. It did not do me any, do me any favors. So we'll just uh, ignore that one. All right. Uh, we got Flash. Deal eight damage. That'll kill that second rank guy. That's a good one. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, oh God damn it. I forgot to look at the number. <laughs> I already screwed up. And uh, they all go next, so he has no more damage, unfortunately. All right, give me foresight on that guy. So he's going to do a popcorn burst, deal six range damage three times, basically. So we got 18 hit points incoming from that guy. Um, let's do a barrier defense for ourselves and for the ranger. It gets a little bit of uh, protection on everybody. I'm really sad that I didn't quite get that guy killed. Leaf Claw. You're not getting that through on him. All right. That wasn't bad at all. Just a little bit of damage on our mage. Okay. Back to the ranger. Do we have a really cheap damage? Deflect. Uh, draw one and gain some... Uh, yeah, we're going to do that. Give me another card. Aim shot again. So aim shot, aim shot. I only have three points to spend this time, though. Let's do one point to kill this guy in front of us. And then, uh, yeah, let's do a rupture. 11 points of range damage, plus we're going to apply bleed and slow. And that moved him to the back of the line. So just doing that alone dropped him back behind every other character. So we'll get a full round. He should be dead before he gets another round. I might, well, I don't know if I want to risk killing him. My healer's last. I'd like to get this character healed up before uh, the exit of the fight. We'll see. <clears throat> so damage does carry over. You don't fully heal in between rounds unless you have some ability that uh, does healing applicable after each combat. Uh, otherwise, you carry the damage forward as you progress. All right, fast drag, fast drag, defend, intercept, and barricade. All heroes get 10. That's a, that's a pretty powerful card. Uh, this is the warrior. Let's just do, uh, fast strike, fast strike. Give, uh, you some protection. And I think we'll just do barricade. He's only got 12 left, so we could definitely kill him. He's going to do leaf claw, deal nine to the front hero. So he can't get the damage through, so I can wait one more round Problem is I'm going to lose some performance bonus if I wait. So I got away getting a heal off with my cleric. It really comes down to, do I think I'm going to draw both a damage spell that'll kill him and be able to drop a heal <laughs> before he gets a turn? Uh, let's, 
Lowers hit points a bit. Transmission is pretty interesting. Cost two. What it does is it basically transfers that two energy to another character and also lets them draw a card. So it's uh, it's basically a buff spell where you're transferring your energy to somebody else and giving them another option. So you can do it to whoever you need to. But I could put it on my healer in hopes that he'll get the combo I'm hoping for. Yeah, let's do that. Let's uh, put that on the healer or on the on the yeah the healer. You can see at the top the things he's got. So nine cards in his draw pile, six cards in his discard pile, um, two extra energy, and one extra card draw for next round. And, um, yeah, let's do that too. We'll get him nice and low, but not quite dead. All right, healer. Come on, show me good stuff. I think we got him. That will kill him, so do I have a heal? All I got was healing rain. <laughs> Damn it. Well, that sucks. All right, healing rain. That's going to do nothing because I don't get the healing effect until next round because it's a regeneration at the start of the turn. Oh, well. At least we're still killing him this round. We didn't lose anything. Ah, uh, we'll do Holy Smite to finish him. We got a little bit of a heal. We got, what, three, three points healed, looks like. I saw a little plus three pop up. All right, so at the end of a fight, you have this option. So each character now gets to choose a card upgrade or a card addition to their hand. They can choose not to take any of the cards and just choose to get some accumulated shards to go into the party pool. So it's either take one of these cards or just choose a shard reward. Why wouldn't you take cards? Well, see our earlier conversation about bloating your deck out too big. If you're going for a lean, mean fighting machine deck uh, and you want to keep the card count low and rely on repeated uses of one card or combinations of cards, uh, you want to keep the deck card count as low as possible so you can keep cycling through it very quickly. There are cards that you can get that are one-time use. Uh, they're one, com one use per combat, so the card gets burned after use. The other cards just go into the discard and get recycled like similar games. So we've got Bladestorm, Punch, and Shield Bash. Uh, this is basically 24 damage. It's deal 8 melee damage and then repeat two more times. So it's going to hit, hit, hit. So it's 24 damage for 3. That's, that's not bad, but that's a pretty expensive card. Uh, Punch is a free attack for 5 bash damage. And Shield Bash, only the front monster. Deal 11, Blunt, and then you gain 12 defense for 2. That's I like that one. That's a good mix. You can deal damage. You can get a bunch of uh, protection on yourself uh, for two cost. I think that's pretty reasonable. I, I'm, I'm thinking I might take the shield bash. Um, you'll notice we got the sawtooth knife. That's an upgrade upgrade version. So we can uh, right click it and we can see this is the original card upgraded from and the cost was lower. This is the current version sawtooth knife. Sawtooth knife. So it's a two cost card instead of a one cost. But instead of dealing 4 damage, 4 slash and 2 bleed, it's doing 13 slash and 7 bleed. So it's massive upgrade. And then the uncommon version is this one. So again, lower cost. It's just a straight upgrade here. You get a little more damage and a little more damage. I'm definitely taking this one. That is that is an awesome one. So that's our ranger. We're going to go ahead and take that one for sure. Uh, Curse of Agony, another uh, high upgrade card. So, monster, deal 9, dark damage, lowers their resistances. Um, then apply bleed, apply poison. Yeah, that is that is massive. Now, the thing about bleed and poison is they only lose one of those numbers per turn, unless they get purged or, or removed by uh, some other effect. So, it's going to apply 4 bleed um, on the round following the round that it's inflicted on the enemy. So when their turn starts, they take four damage. The next turn that they get, they take three damage. The next turn, they take two damage. So it's a damage over time effect. So that's 12 damage over time, essentially, um, that's going to occur. And uh, it gives uh, resistances and such. Uh, we're going to take that for sure, too. <clears throat> and then the other only upgraded one is Mind Blast. Deal six mind damage and apply four insanity. So they would lose 4% uh, mind resistance. Plus, they're going to do less... Uh, is that do less damage? Yeah, damage done minus... Yeah, so they would do, uh, what, 2% less damage. Because um, they're insane. I'm not sure on that one. 
I haven't done much with the dark damage. It seems like you got to really focus in on doing dark stuff and stacking different effects. Uh, there's clarity, which is purge, which is helpful. Um, so purge fury. Dispel insanity and dispel slow and then grant an extra card. Um, then flash is a one point uh, seven holy damage, pretty straightforward. So this would be good for helping keep us protected against negative effects. Cast on any hero for zero cost. So I do like that. I think I'll, I think I'll take clarity. All right, uh, this one. They're all front monster attacks. They're all basic. <clears throat> I think I'm going to take the uh, the shield bash. All right, there we go. Now, this is where, like I said, it, it I, I can definitely see where co-op is a big thing. If there were four different humans, each controlling one of these characters, this would go a lot faster. <laughs> they could each focus on just their own character, their own item option upgrades, their own card upgrades. One player doing solo, I've got to keep track of four different characters, all their gear, all their card decks, and so on. So, um yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got two choices now. My goal, I want to hit that uncommon encounter, which was, oh, a rare event, and then an uncommon event. Yeah, so we're going to we're gonna go north. We're going to get to there, there, there. Then we got to go to the character event. Yeah, we're going to try to hit the rare and the uncommon events. All right, let's go to uh, Crops on Fire. Near the farm, you come across a burned field and a burning house. In front of the house, there's a fire imp causing fires next to some burning cornies. Even half burned, the house may contain something valuable, but you'll have to deal with a fire imp and cornies first. You can deal with the imp and investigate the house or ignore him. Um, so here's an interesting system. These are storyline events. You get to pick what you want to do. I can either just start an attack. And we just attack the imp head on. We can try stealth, hide in the cornfield, and attack him by surprise. Now notice here it says group five or lower. Everyone draws a card and the results are added up. The number, what it's referring to is the cost of the card. So based on how your party is put together and the cost of the cards within their deck, all it's going to do is it's going to shuffle their deck, draw a random card out of it, and it's going to look at the card cost. And it's going to add those numbers up for each of the four characters. If you get a total of five or lower, you succeed and you get the stealth advantage. In this one, I'll cast a cold spell to scare the imp. It's a fire imp, so we're going to cast a cold spell. If we draw a cold spell card out of our deck, we get that, that result. And then sneak away. Continue your, on your way without uh, attracting the, attempt, the imp's attention. So on this one, we have to get three or higher. So if we were stacked with zero cost cards between our various decks, this would be a rough one. Um, three or higher with four cards. I mean, if one guy draws a two cost card or even a three cost card, we're, we're golden. Uh, but it, there's a chance. Now, the, the little die at the side, if you highlight it, it will show you the actual percentage chance that you're going to meet these conditions with your current deck. So when it says group five or lower, we have a 77% chance to actually achieve that. This one, 25% chance that I'm going to draw a cold spell card out of her current deck. And this one, 89% if we just try to sneak away. I'm going to go with stealth and hide. We're going to do the 77% option. So we need a five or lower out of the four card draws. We got a five. We got it exactly. So we succeeded. We got the five or lower. You had no problem hiding in the cornfields without him seeing you when at least... When he least expects it, you come out of the shadows and give him a good blow. The imp is stunned and begins to bleed. The fight begins. All right, so he's going to have a bleed effect on him when the fight starts. He's going to be stunned. I think that means he... I don't know if he gets negative effects or if he has to skip his first attack. Uh, and then we get some XP. Ah, oh, he's slowed. So that's the stun. Oh, that's way slower. Cool. So because we succeeded at that option, he's got eight bleed. So he's going to lose eight, seven, six, five, four as time goes by, unless he's got some ability of fixing that bleed, bleed event. Uh, and you can see the amount of their hit points in the bar here that they're going to lose due to uh, things they've got going on. So they're starting with fire damage. Poor burnt cornies. Roasted cornies. What are we looking at? Uh, I love it. They're burning, but they've got 41% fire resistance. <laughs> so we want to hit them with cold. 
I think all of them we want to hit with cold, basically. Yeah. For the elemental stuff. And uh, slashing against the imp. What what melee? Any melee bonuses? Blunt against the cornies. I don't have much in the way of blunt with my, uh, my frontline guys. Okay, so as per usual, 21 speed goes first. Good old ranger. We got these cornies in the way here. Uh, hopefully we get the... Uh, the howl option right away on our on our wolf man here and he'll drop them back so that uh she goes next from 12 drop them down to 10 i don't know if they're tied i think if they're tied whoever's further to the front of the group goes first so they would still go first over him if they all ended up at tens all right hey the sawtooth knife came up so any monster i want huh deal 13 slash and apply seven more bleed so, of course, the imp is probably the more dangerous. A lot of the attacks are front monster only, so I've got to utilize what I can to get rid of him. I could do all four of my points, do uh, 14 ranged and then another 14 and then stack on seven more bleed. That'd be 15 bleed. He'd basically be dead in two rounds without me doing anything else if he doesn't get rid of the, uh, the bleed effect. I could slow one of the cornies also. I, I think I'm going to worry less about the cornies. Let's let's really focus on that guy. So, sit him with that. He's now up to 15 bleed. And you can see he's going to lose a huge chunk at the start of his turn. And then we will do uh, aim shot. Ah, oh, didn't quite kill him. He'll have three health left. All right. I don't know if I'll have a rear attack option. Although he goes last. We'll, we'll get him killed. Somebody will be able to finish him off so he won't get a turn. All right, in turn. Magnus. What you got, Magnus? You did not get your howl, so unfortunately, cornies are going to go next before my mage. Uh, I don't know what they're going to cast because we haven't spotted them yet. Um, front, 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 self. Go ahead and do that one. Give me a card and some more energy. We got five, two, four, five. So, uh, let's do the shield bash one. Front monster, yeah, bash damage plus we gain some defense. And what else? Probably rend followed by fast strike. I think I'm gonna hope that the uh, the twelve is gonna. Keep him somewhat safe from uh, the amount of damage they're going to do. Double rend, and we'll fast strike. All right, cornies, what you got? Popcorn burst. So he hit my midline. So front guy's dead. He's already going to die from his bleed and burn damage, so we don't have to worry about him. I need to get one hit on the back. Fire blast will do it. I only need three, right? Yep, I only need three, so let's kill him off. Whoops. God damn it. I forgot he was immune to fire. <laughs> I needed to do the frost bolt. Uh, Curse of Agony. I got four points. Let's see. That will do three. And I gain... Yeah, let's do that instead. All right. So dead on his turn. Dead on his turn. Now we can focus on the middle guy. Let's put a Curse of Agony on him. Oh, yeah. Look at all that. Cool. I like it. Blocked, resisted, current hit points. It's very well presented information. I like it. All right. I don't have enough energy for that. Time for the cleric. Let's, uh, let's get some clarity going on. Nah. Well, we do have some burn effects. I don't think this is going to get rid of burn effects, though. No, it's not going to get rid of burn effects. I don't have anything that's going to stop the burn on me. I don't want to stop the burn on them. Healing is expensive. All right, let's get at least one heal in. And we'll do uh we'll do flash and we'll do a barrier on hmm. Barrier on the mage, and I think we're done. Should probably use the clarity anyway, since it's not being 
uh, used just gave me the energy point. <clears throat> There's the hunter's mark. Definitely hunter's mark him. Uh, adrenaline. I think the fight will be over before he has to suffer the adrenaline effect. <clears throat> Four points, huh? Aim shot. And he's also dead. All right, so we win. <laughs> I deflected and then got another deflect. That's funny. Magnus, no. Don't take damage now. It's all defense. Hey. What the hell? He, he got to it. Uh, I didn't look at it carefully enough. He got to do his action before. Apparently he had end of turn damage. I didn't look at it. He didn't die at the beginning of the turn. He died at the end of his turn. So we got that one extra action in. Okay. So what do we got? We got heavy strike, upgraded card, three cost, draw card, deal 23 blunt damage. Yeah, that's that's a lot. An upgraded intercept. So we have uh, 15 defense that we get to put on somebody else. Aim shot, frostbolt, shield warding. Morning art of stuttering. Hmm. I do want some more blunt damage, but man, that three cost. All right, let's go heavy cost cards for him, I guess. Dual strike, so you're doing both sli or slashing damage and range damage. Only to the front monster. Two cost for 13 base damage. An upgraded aim shot doing 17 or a poison dart. Three, two range, two poison. Um... So it's a straight upgrade, two cost for 14 to two cost. Well, it says 16, but we're getting 17. I think I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to hold out on him, I think. Let's take the shards on that one. Frostbolt, 16 cold damage and apply to chill resistance or two chill effects. Minus one speed per five charges. Yeah, we only have two charges being applied from that particular one. I don't think I'm going to do dark damage focused stuff on this run. All right, we'll take frost bolts and then a mental shake. 14 mind damage, insanity, and a sight. So the sight effect, the little eyeball effect, that means I'm going to get to look at his cards while it's in effect. And it lasts for the amount of rounds that the amount of charges equals. So for two rounds, I'll get to see cards. Dawn light equals the cards, equals your hand of cards. So if I cast that first, I don't know if it counts the card itself. It'd be either four or five damage for, for no cost. But it's a one-time use. Then it gets burned. I don't like it. Shield warding. 22 shield and 15 block. So I guess the main difference between shield and block is block is the current turn. Shield actually generates block the next turn. So I'd get 15 shield on whoever I cast it on this round. And then they would get 22 block on the next round. I do like that. That's a, that's a pretty good upgrade for defense. Yeah, let's go with that. The Burning House. You're at the entrance of the Burning House. Clearly, this was a poor man's house. And you can see that the contents inside are already destroyed or burned. Before you leave, a chest catches your eye. Although the chest is still on fire. The fire is spreading rapidly. And there'll be nothing left in a few moments. Will you venture into the flames for a poor man's chest? So our choices are loot, rush into the house, try to get the chest... So it's a group. 
Everyone draws a card and the results are added up. We got a 76% or just leave. Yeah, of course we got to try. No zeros. There we go. Look at that. Oh, critical success. I didn't know there was such a thing. Two, four, six. We got seven. How does the rule work for critical success? I was assuming like doubling the number. If I had gotten to eight, for example, that would be a critical. But I got seven. So I wonder what the uh, what the rule is for critical versus standard success. That's some odd math. <laughs> is it 50% higher than uh, the, the base number? So six is a critical success in this case. I don't know. I'm curious. I don't see a way for me to find out how that works. You come out safely with a chest. Miraculously, it is intact. Also inside the house, you find an old rope that seems to be useful. You proceed to open the chest. 80 gold, 72 experience. All right. So here's where we get item rewards. So each character gets to pick one item out of this list. Um, everybody has to pull from the same list of things. You can see this is going to unlock this item. Apparently, it's the first time I've encountered a few of these. And um, you can see the little category selection here. So with him currently selected, this is a weapon item. I'm already using a Wolf Slayer. Random hero gains one extra card at the start of the turn. Uh, so this would replace that. Uh, definitely not. That's a, maybe for the, uh, if I was doing dark focused mage, maybe. Or dark focused mage. Uh, silver ring, max hit point plus four. All resistance is plus two. It's not bad. Combat start, gain one evasion. Basically, that allows you to uh, to dodge an attack. Prevents one hit per charge. Not one damage, one actual hit. Remove one charge when this happens. And it also removes shackle. Uh, spyglass. Ooh, I like that too. Apply two sight to all monsters at the start of combat. So you can see their first round... You can see their first two rounds of cards. That could be pretty powerful. A lot of the fights are over within a couple of rounds. Um, so that's a potion slot. That, I think, would go on the ranger. So let's get Andrin here, the spyglass. That is now slotted into his potion or knickknack. <laughs> Whatever. Accessory. I guess we'll call that the accessory slot. We got weapon, armor, rings, accessories, and I don't know what this last one is. I don't think I've seen a single card that is represented by this. I wonder if it's like, I don't know, beast forms of various types or something. All right, what else we got? Uh, emerald necklace, speed plus one, and leather armor. So similar to the other screen I showed, um, for picking cards, we can forego picking any items and just take a cash reward instead. So if uh, Magnus here doesn't want any of these items, he can just click this and 50 gold will be added to our, our party treasury. Um, uh, Cloak of Evasion uh, it wouldn't be bad for uh, the, the wizard or the, uh, the cleric especially. Notice it does not go away at the start of the turn either. It stays on the character until it saves them. Yeah, I like that. Let's uh, let's go with the wizard. Let's let her get a cloak of evasion, and the rest. I I don't know. I don't want the dark damage increase. It's nice, but I'm not too worried about four points. Speed not enough. Leather armor. So the melee resistances are all plus ten. Well, I mean slice, bash, and range. <clears throat> that wouldn't be terrible, but I think I'm gonna wait for a little better. So, uh, Deckard, take the money, and you take the money. All right, we must path to the north if we want to get this. So we're foregoing a, oh, the suspicious hatch map transition. So this type of thing here in the middle of the map, this goes to like a mini map area where there will be a smaller map with, I, I haven't seen much, I've only seen one example of this, but it had like, one, two, three. I had like five nodes on the map that you had to move through. Some events, some fighting. Um, just depends on uh, the location, I guess. Um, so I know what that one looks like. <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna ignore that one for this run, though. I want to go up here and get this rare event. So we gotta go here. Uh oh, what the hell? The obelisk influence is corrupting the monster in this area. You can choose to fight them under the effects of corruption to increase the difficulty and gain additional additional rewards. Poison fields, all monsters gain, all damage plus two, immune to poison, 
And then every round, all heroes suffer three poison. Ouch. And there's this is the group I'm going to be fighting. The two burnt cornies, one regular corny, and a farmer who I think heals. And maybe even summons replacements. That seems hard. I don't have a lot of unlocks. I think this is one of those things where you might want to wait for the, some more meta unlocks. <laughs> With a completely default... Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't I don't don't think I have enough healing capability to uh I would take a lot of damage that I would have to carry forward into further ones. I think I'm gonna go without the additional challenge. So the rewards though would be each year I'll be able to remove two Oh, that's powerful. Man, I'd love that. So I can either take two cards out or I can get 720 gold, 720 crystal. That that's those are powerful. Ugh. And <laughs> uh, you're supposed to say, I, I dare you. I double dog dare you. <laughs> I don't know if I'm willing to stick my, my tongue on that, uh, that flagpole. Every monster gains plus two damage. Immune. I, I don't. I don't care about the immune to poison. I'm not doing that much poison damage. All all heroes suffer three. That's gonna get harsh. All right. I'm gonna try it. Let's let's go out in a blaze of poisonous glory. So I'm gonna pick the. I don't know. It's really early in the run for me to get a lot of value out of this. I mean, I can trim out things I don't think I'll use very often, which is helpful. I don't know when I'll get to use these much. Yeah, let's let's do the remove two cards. By picking these, it uh, said yes, I'm accepting the challenge. All right, I think I'm going to get screwed. You all made me do it, so I'm going to blame you. Yep. Poison, 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 poison. All right, what's the order of events? Same as before, pretty much. we got the farmer in the middle. I would really love uh, to slow them down. I'm really hoping he gets the howl effect. That'll at least get my, my mage in play before these guys get to go. What's your deal? Regular corny versus roasted cornies. All right, so still same as before. I'm, I'm looking in this corner over here. So uh, cold and bash is what we want to go after the cornies with. Same thing with him. And the farmer, lightning... Really? He's resistant to pretty much everything. I don't have much mind. He's immune to poison. All right, so I just got to hit him with whatever. And then cold and bash, preferably, with, with the cornies. Yep, exactly. Slay the Spire meets Darkest Dungeon. Uh, So, Expert Tracker, again, he always seems to get that. Let's see. He did not get his Howl card. I think we're going to get rid of that and that and that. Hopefully he'll get his Hal card. All right, what are we down to? Adrenaline. Uh, I got four points to spend. This will get me to six. I got five points of cards. I use them all. Any monster, any monster, front monster. Sure. Let's do that. I think he heals, so I really want to drop him with these aimed shots. I don't have much else that hits the back, especially with this guy, so it's going to take me a couple of rounds, unfortunately. Uh, we got that uh, option now for sight, reveal two cards, so we can see he's going to do Leaf Claw against the front hero, against the front hero. Popcorn Burst against a random hero for 24 damage. That's going to suck. And watering. Apply rain, which puts out fires, and uh, heal eight points to all monsters. So that sucks. He's got a group heal, and he puts out fires. Which also makes them susceptible to lightning damage when they're wet, but, you know. Yeah, this is, this is going to be rough. Uh, do we focus fire the cornies? I'm only going to do 14 each with those. 28, an 8, 36... Plus four, four. He's not quite going to die from... 
from this guy, but I can probably kill him with the follow-up with Magnus. Yeah, let's let's try to focus down instead of dropping these on the back guy. That'd only be 26. Wouldn't even get us halfway there. Alright. Uh, aim shot. Aim shot. Slice. Come on, Magnus. There we go. Captain's Howl. Oh, no. It did move him. Awesome. It dropped him all far enough. Apparently, it's not the right the rule, I thought, because these guys, I thought, because they're in more forward positions and it's tied. Yeah, I don't know the exact rule. I'm sure I saw something in, in a rule somewhere about how it breaks ties for who goes when during a round. Whatever, I'll take it. We got all my characters get their turns before uh, before the enemies get to go now. So that's awesome. All right, what else we got? We got four points to spend. Uh, most everything is front monster. <laughs> everything I've got is front monster. I only need nine. That'll kill the front guy for one point. Yeah, we're definitely going to do that. <clears throat> get rid of him. Two points to shield bash. And we've got... A lot of hit coming in. I've got no defense so far. I do have resistance. Oh, man. I think I'm going to have to forego doing the first strike, or the fast strike, in order to get a uh, barricade up for everybody. Let's get everybody some block. And I think... He's just going to do healing. This is probably going to land on somebody in back. It's a random hero. It might strike my front guy. Hmm. I think I'm more interested in protecting somebody with lower hit points. <laughs> All right. What do we got? So, Fire Blast. Um, so Frostbolt's going to do extra damage. Instead of 14, we're getting 18, 16, and 12. Four points to spend. Could do double Frostbolt plus Fire Blast. That might be enough to kill that front guy. Let's find out. And again, I forgot to do Cold Spark first. That's all right. <laughs> hey, there we go. At least we got him down to a death condition. All right. Now what do we got? Foresight. Um, sure. I want to know what he's doing even longer than we currently know. We got barriers. I got enough points to cast everything. Oh, yeah. We have purge. Rage, which or Fury, which we don't have. I don't have slow effects. I don't have insanity. I can gain a card. But is it... Uh... Yeah, it's the start of the turn. Alright. This is my last character before they're going to get their turn. Let's do uh, clarity on... Do clarity on you. Flash on you. And barrier on you and you. Oh, damn it. I forgot the heal went off, so he didn't die. <laughs> I should have finished him instead of assuming he would fall over. Damn you, timing. Lesson learned. All right, only three points to spend. Draw a card, gain four defense. We're on our ranger, and we got a corny coming up before my other guys this round. Um, well... 
Don't want to do that on the frontline guy because that would waste the poison. That's not enough to kill him all by its own. And I think I'll let the uh, the warrior, he's got a lot of front guy attacks that should finish him off. So we should concentrate on rear damage. I think I'm going to start working on, oh yeah, what are they? Popcorn burst again, but I think he'll be dead before he can do it. Leaf claw, I just need to get a little defense on my front guy to counter that. And Sickle Slash, front hero. So again, I just need to stack some protection on my front guy and we'll be cool for the round. So let's do uh, some of that. And that's front monster only, huh? That's unfortunate. All right, Magnus. What do we got? We got Enrage. One time use, draw a card and get some energy. Do it. Now, I need to fast strike to kill the front guy. Then I can follow that up with the uh, the heavy strike on the second one. I'd be out of points at that point. That means I don't have any defense. So I can't do that. Uh, again, that's unfortunate. I gotta get some defense on my guy. Don't know where the popcorn burst is going. I gotta kill him. And my defense will block that, but it's not gonna block most of that. So we're gonna end up taking some hits. I think I will do fast strike followed by rend on the second guy. Can we drop him before he gets his turn? And we've run out of... Oh, no, we, he hasn't drawn yet. Um, <laughs> Free Fire Blast. All right, none of this stuff is based on the number of cards in my hand. Let's Frost Bolt. You... Eight more, huh? Couldn't quite get him. So close. All right, we're not doing too bad. I think one more round, hopefully. We might do it this round and get the, the great bonus. What do we got? Holy Smite, Holy Smite, heal, Foresight again. Sure, drop Foresight over there. Four points to spend, huh? Let's get... Healing there. Corny is going to get healed, probably. i got to either finish him off. Guess I might as well get the bless. Definitely get a Hunter's Mark. Then two points, huh? So 15 or 22. <laughs> hmm. All right, Wolf Man. Hopefully you can finish him. <laughs> Defend, defend, defend. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, oh, we got enough. Just barely. All right, upgrade, upgrade, unlock, upgrade. 
Let's see. So performance bonus, good. More gold, more experience, and plus one cards tier. So we got the Shiv, zero cost. Any monster, four ranged, and apply a poison. Hmm. <laughs> Punch for seven, bash. It's actually not bad for a zero cost. Repair armor. Annoying whistle. 15 mind damage and apply two insanity or two mind resistance. Or no insanity, yeah. Another curse of agony. Alright, I don't like any of these three. We're gonna take the shards there. Rain is great if you uh, are getting set on fire a lot. And or want to, uh, if you go electrical, that uh, douses the other team as well because it's a global effect. Then you can hit them with lightning. Yeah, let's take that. And we got to take the shiv, and we're at 17 cards already. 16, 17, 17. Not precise strike. Punch, maybe. Repair armor, maybe. So it grants eight block. Grants three reinforce, which gives uh, resist 30% resistances for slash blunt piercing. Charges do not stack, just di dictates how long you keep the bonus. So three turns of uh, resistance. And then it dispels the uh, the crack, the, the blunt damage. Um, I like it. It's only one cost. I mean, even if you're not using the uh, repair armor part, the repair, the cracks... You're getting resistance bonuses and armor for one cost. I think I'll take that over the punch. All right. What am I looking at? Cards unlocked plus two. Monsters killed plus four. Remaining uses two. You can remove cards from your deck as long as you fulfill the minimum number of cards required. Oh, yeah, that's right. This is the reward I picked. <laughs> two cards per character. Now I remember we're getting the church effect to remove cards with 100% discount. So it's a free remove cards choice. This is how it works when you go to the church at the town at the start, but you don't get 100% discount from there normally. All right, and it should be two per character, so let's get rid of uh, what? One of the fast strikes? I picked up a heavy strike and the shield bash. Both pretty expensive. I think we'll get rid of a standard defend. And one of the fast strikes. Andron. We picked up the shiv. And the sawtooth knife. So a zero cost and a two cost. Hit any monster for damage. Apply bleed and poison respectively. Let's get rid of a standard slice. And we do have a couple of deflects. I like it because it uh, it's draw another card, gain some defense, and it costs nothing. So I'm not going to get rid of those. I think I might get rid of one of the aim shots, though. Yeah. Evelyn. Curse of Agony. Two cost. Lots of uh, dark poison. Bleed. Hmm. Get rid of a fire blast. And I'm not using these wards all that much. I'll probably regret it later. I do kind of like the transmission, transferring energy and uh, an extra card draw to. Other characters, and we got an upgrade. Let's take out a frost bolt. We got an upgraded version. We got one of the base frost bolts. All right, Reginald, what'd you pick up? Divine Grace. So, dispel curses. 
Heal equals cards in hand plus bless on anybody. So it's a pretty good purge and healing card. And then shield awarding upgrade. Or just shield awarding. All right, so that's a whole lot of block. Let's get rid of one of the barriers. And I think a flash. All right, we're done. Cool. That was worth it. Uh, now we're off the water mill for a character event. I'm assuming it goes straight here. Whispers in the shadow, you enter a nearby water mill. Seems empty at first glance, but then you hear a whisper directed at you. So, you are my praise. You're scaring them. Leave, please. You aren't my praise. First, I have an offer for you. If you happen to find a very strong venom and give it to me, I will join your group after I finish this job. Hmm. You'll search for it if you get the chance. You ask for a clue where to start. That accent is def definitely that of a lizard man. I've helped your tribe before, so I think it's a, it's a character unlock event. We can get a lizard man option. Decline. Someone who doesn't show up when asking for a favor doesn't deserve your trust. Sure, we'll accept it. In my homeland, Aquar Fall Marsh, there's a cave full of spiders. Maybe there. Take this. The spoils of my victims. It's help for your search. All right. So we got to find Aquafar Marsh, which I think is one of the choices at the end of this area when we transition to the next map. We get three choices. A fire choice, a water choice, and I forget the other one. There's three choices. Uh, I think the Aquafar Marsh is probably the water choice. And then we've got to find a cave of spiders. All right. Uh, we get another opportunity for gear. Um, I'm not liking much of these. Hmm. How about... You get some extra hit points. You pick up some armor. You're taking a lot of front, front enemy hits. I think that's all I care about. I don't think the rest of these I'm too worried about. Next up, Northern Plains. Oh, what? This is also one of these? Extreme? <laughs> Wait a minute. So it just randomly is showing me this? There was no indication this was going to be anything that I could tell. Is it, is it, is it blue here or is it blue because that's my only choice of direction? Hmm. Uh, I'm not taking this challenge. No, thank you. Uh, so party will gain access to an exotic equipment shop with a 30% discount. Each hero will be able to remove two cards for free from the deck again. I don't think I need this. While nice, I I think this is, again, a later in the run benefit where you've accumulated more, more gold to take advantage of it. Heavy weaponry. All monsters gain all damage plus three. Immune to vulnerable. And when a monster deals damage, it applies a vulnerable and also a slow. Yeah, there's no way. And uh, those are some ugly looking... What are those? Pigs? War pigs? And a wolf? No. No, not taking that one. Thanks anyway. What do we got? War boars. So 49 hit points, 15 speed. They're, they're pretty quick. Uh, good resistances to the various melee attacks. Lightning is their, their weakness. Otherwise, they're, they're pretty hardy. And uh, all of them are going right in the middle of the group. And I'm not going to be able to drop their speed enough to get these guys ahead of them. So we're going to take some big hits here <laughs> real quick. Uh, how about you? The Brigand. So, no global. Again, really good resistances. And again, lightning. Alright, so they're, they're resistant to damn near everything, and lightning is their, their bane. Uh... 
All right, so Hunter's Mark. I'm going to assume. Oh, that's right. So Moon Guard, lowest hit point monster, grants 14 block. Double chop. So he's going to do 10 damage to the front hero. Tusk Barrage, random hero, 12 damage basically, ranged. Same thing, and same thing. All right, yeah, that sucks. That's a whole lot of thunk damage into random heroes. It's going to be hard to protect against this. And they're going to get to go before I get to drop a lot of my protection options. Ugh. Let's see. Yeah, let's do the same thing as usual. We're going to need to get some defense up, and this is not going to get me there. Hmm. This is going to be weird, but I think I'm going to have to concentrate on defending this first round. I might get rid of this first strike. All right, Shiv. That one's going to, it doesn't matter. They're all going in the same time frame. I'm a little worried about what else he might have back here. Gonna put the hunter's mark on him first. Um. 21 points between those two. Urgh. Yeah, let's go with the damage. At least we got the howl. Let's see. Lots of intercepts. Four points, so I can cast everything in my hand with four points. So let's do that. Whoops! Well, now I got to think about it. <clears throat> That's everything but one. So if I forego I gotta get defense on myself. Gotta get some protection elsewhere too. Let's do 15 for myself, or I can do resistances and 8 for somebody else. I could cast it on myself as well. Give me even more resistance. Well, that's more turns of resistance. Um, won't quite kill him unless I get lucky with another card draw. Nope. Damn it. So close. Three hit points. Now I wish I had that other strike. All right. Let's boost it. Incoming! All right, so we got one guy got hit fairly hard, but everybody else, we absorb most of the blows. Well, our full team now gets to go, so definitely kill one of them. Quick fire blast will... Nope, it'll block the entire amount. Um, sure. Actually, I didn't need it. Damn it. Should, have, should not have done that. <laughs> He's got exactly enough to block the full damage. Uh, 
That's funny. He's going to take one bleed, but he's got uh, two hit points. All right, somebody else will be able to kill him. Let's focus elsewhere. Uh, let's do Fire Blast. Charge battery here. Cross bolt here. And focus. And elemental ward there. Damn it, once again. charge front hero front hero front hero <laughs> he's gonna go rabid give himself a bunch of bonuses and apply some negatives so front hero you better get some defense up you got a lot of incoming and we got all damage dealing here ouch let's see we gotta kill this front guy Shield Bash won't kill him by itself. I only have three points. I can't do Barricade and enough either. Uh, all the damage this round is coming on the front guy, so granting 10 defense to everybody is not going to really accomplish much. I need the front, or need myself, so I think I'll go with Shield Bash and then a Fast Strike. Yep, yeah, not going to be able to kill him. Oh, supposedly he'll die on his turn, so I forgot about that. So he will die. So it'll just be these two. So that is a lot of damage, though. We'll get a bleed. All right, we can survive that. Bad dog. All right, um, that's a per cards in your hand. So if we're going to do that, we're going to do it now. And get that there. Yeah, I probably should have hit the back guy. He might die this round and then we won't get the uh, the lightning damage. Um, we have a lot of points. All right, so let's give you a boost. Don't know their intentions currently. Seven points. Two, four, five, six, seven. We can do everything in the uh, in the hand. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Hey. 
Finish him, big guy. You do. He's going to do the howl again, and then an axe sweep. All heals, or all heroes, 10, 10 slash damage. Uh, now I want that. Everybody gains. <laughs> Everybody gains uh, defense. I don't have it. I can get a little bit of defense on... Oh, this is self only. I can get six. Six on two other folks. He's still got four. So we'll intercept. We'll intercept. Defend on me. Rend the enemy. Not too bad so far. Mm, that's not going to do much. Curse of Agony. Got to do Curse of Agony. And all of my guys are going to get to go again before he does. So let's put some heavy duty points on you. And we'll put an elemental ward on you. Four points. I think he should be dead before he gets his turn, so I'm just going to ignore... Well, I need to get the healing done now. Sixteen versus thirteen, and I gain bless. Um, let's do damage. He's dead anyway. Didn't notice the twenty bleed effect. <laughs> Get him, Magnus. Get him. All right. Uh, vitalize. Only upgraded card. So, two cost. Gain one vitality, which is gain hit point and max hit point, plus five per charge. Remove one charge. Is So, is... If, Two cost for... Wait, if it raises max hit point, is that permanent? Because it's a one-time use. The card burns after you use it. So your current HP goes up five, and then your max HP gets increased. But the chances you're going to get back up to your max through healing is fairly small, I think. Huh. I'll think more about how that works. Go ahead and take it. Searing Nova. All monsters deal nine... Apply X burn. X equals half. X equal what? All right, I'm confused. Not permanent? Hmm. That seems weird for that cost then. I guess if you're already maxed hit points, that gives you a boost. But if you're like it. 80 hit points and you've got 100 max, then you're just healing for 5. Raising your max to 105 for a round isn't really going to do anything. So I, I don't understand the real point of that. That doesn't seem like a very useful card for the cost. Searing Nova. Uh, I'm trying to follow this one. So deal 9 fire. Apply X burn. Which means I'm going to have my fire resistance lowered and I'm going to suffer fire damage per charge. I, I, I don't understand how this works. <laughs> Apply X symbol. X equals your symbol times 0 0.5. Well, that doesn't make any sense. You can't declare something X and then say X is based on the X at half. What the hell does that mean? Am I am I am I just 
like being really stupid here? Somebody tell me what this means. I don't follow it. So all monsters, deal nine, apply X burn, X equals. I'll have to see it in action. I'll figure it out then. Fireball I know about. That's pretty pretty straightforward. 19 damage and then target side stake 9. So you gotta get some apply burn. And then it just makes the burn lots worse. All right, so you got to be pretty fire focused. Um, maim, bash damage, apply a crack in their armor, also slow them down dramatically. Front monster. No thanks. Leap slam. I like leap slam. I just wish there were more things. It's one of the few things that'll get to that back monster, but it's a pretty high cost card. Yeah, I understand how the regeneration works. I just don't understand why anybody would think the vitality is useful. Super high cost cards. Go with a maim. I think I'm going to ignore this one. And let's take a... We'll do a standard fireball. Alright, we finally made it to that uncommon event. Edge of the forest. That is a resting node. I don't know, I've had some, uh, some events already. <laughs> Maybe I don't want the uncommon event. Maybe it'd be better to go to the rest. We're not, we're not doing that too bad on hit points. I don't know what else you can do when you rest yet. I haven't actually done a rest. Let's do a rest. I was aiming for that, but let's do the rest so I can see just what it does mechanically. The Fang Gates. You're entering the northern part of the forest. The Fang Gates guarding the bandit camp stand before you, and the path ahead will not be easy. Now is the perfect time to rest or prepare for the battle ahead. Remember, you don't have time to spare, so you can only do one activity before con continuing. All right, so we got a list of things. Rest, plus 30%. Relax and cover some strength. Forage, being near a bandit camp, you can surely find some gold or shards. 67%. On a forest trail, lead us directly into the bandit camp. 34%. I can take care of an injury and try to heal us. Healing spell card. So, yeah, I, I, I don't think we get much benefit out of the rest. Let's go ahead and try the uh, 67%. Five or lower. Success. You found a suspicious trunk. You found a hidden cache of, uh, a hidden cache of the bandits. <laughs> Uh, you get six finer 60 gold, 320 crystals, and 72. All right. Uh, which way do we want to go? We can go the short route here and then straight to the uh, the big fight before we transition the map. Or we can go up and then do a bandit camp common event. And then down there. Oh, wait. You're going to let me go this way? Uh, That seems odd. This is all blocked out now. I don't think it'll actually let me go that way. 
I think this, the solid ones show the path I have taken. These are now inaccessible, I believe. It's just showing where the connections are regardless of where I point. All right, so uh, yeah, let's let's get the extra event stacked in there. So we'll do event or uh, fight event, and then do the uh, the final. <laughs> An easy one, huh? Vigorous, all monsters gain max hit points plus 30, all damage plus one. Remove one card from the deck or a rare equipment shop. See, now we got more money. I might want to do that one. And it's the uh, pigs and wolves again, huh? Sure, let's pick the rare equipment shop. I'm kind of curious. It seems like a lot of hit point bonus, though. Again, they're pretty fast. What you doing? Random hero, 15. Get defense. Double chop. Youch. All right, that back guy's got to go. Ah, that back guy's got to go. So I need a little bit of front protection. I can't do much against the random hero damage. That's going to suck. I think this is going to hurt me worse than the, the previous fight that we did on the hard mode. It's looking kind of ugly. Hmm. Well, I didn't get the option to improve my, uh, my warrior, my wolf guy this time. Give it to me. Nope. <laughs> Well, let's try to get some stuff stacking up on this guy in back. Up oh, monster only. Uh, we got the Howl, at least. Front monster, front monster, and intercepts. I can I can use all the cards. Doesn't matter what order I do them in. Ouch. I have very little defense of my own. Um, I can drop the pig down enough I can get some other options before he'll get to go if I maim him which we gotta do there's not really much in the way of choices here other than where do I put some defense random front guy takes 12 boosts heals all right, so I just need to get some points on my front guy. And the random is just going to fall where it falls. Ouch. No fire effects to worry about. Hmm. Oof, it's only going to take half damage. Nice. Good old insulation. You are going to do the random. We're not going to kill you in time. Yeah, I want to beef somebody up, but I don't think I can afford it. I need to keep focus firing this guy down. Uh, 
All right, so... Vitalize. <laughs> Pretty sure I'll be able to finish him off before he gets his next turn. And we're not going to get this guy taken care of in time. Let's do... That's a good spread. We got lucky on that one. All right, so I got my two main damage dealers and then his main guys still focusing. He's got 14 block now. Ouch. Free energy. Go ahead and adrenalize. That'll at least get rid of his block for the round, but I don't think I'm going to... No, we're not going to get this guy dead, because I don't think he has anything that's going to hit the back row. But he's going to get at least one more round off, it looks like. Yep, front, front, front. I didn't get enough. If we didn't have that block, we'd be okay. All right, keep working on him. So close. <laughs> minus 10, minus, or minus 10, beginning turn, lose 10. Why doesn't it have... Oh, minus 10 and he'll be at 10, got it. All right, three more points. So it's going to be rupture and slice. Oh, we got it. We, we do have it. I'd have to spend all my points to kill him. <laughs> what do we got coming in? Tusk charge to the front hero. Big ouchie. And I don't have any defense up. Uh, rabid. He's going to boost and I don't know. He's going to scatter shot. Middle hero. And hit to the side. Oh, this 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 round is going to suck. Oh, we're going to hit hard this round. Ouch. Yeah, this is going to be really bad. <laughs> Oh, man. This is gonna be bad. I can't even get 15 up on myself. Wow. Um... I am sorely tempted to just defend, defend, and repair armor. That'll get me up to 38 block plus resistance. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I, I think it's terrible. That gets me to 30. And I can put this on her. Ouch. Can't wait to see what this is going to look like. Mm, we 
got lucky with that last random there. Alright. Man, we gotta do some damage. So he's dead. At least we don't have to deal with him. Let's do definitely a fireball. Right in the middle. All three points. Um, yeah, gotta do a fireball. And of course I did the wrong one again. I gotta check that cards in hand bonuses before I cast things. I keep forgetting. Barriers, smites, foresight. Give me foresight on that guy. Three points, huh? Don't know what they're going to do. Let's get... Uh, ooh. That guy's going to go before my... My warrior, huh? It's fine. Only two points. I get one card. Uh, is that speed going to change anything? Not going to be enough to change his turn. Won't be enough to drop speed to change the order of turns any. So, I guess I'm going to go with the direct damage. <laughs> damage is piling up. <clears throat> Only three points. Youch. All right, nine needed. We could rend to get rid of the first guy. Fast strike won't be enough by one point. And barricade, get some protection up for everybody. Jeez, I knew this one was going to suck. <laughs> Alright, healer. You're going to be on overtime duty trying to keep the ranger up. Uh, best way is via my Discord. If you use Discord, just hop onto my Discord channel and you can convo me the uh, Steam key. And or let me know which game you're talking about <laughs> before you purchase it if you haven't already. Maybe something that I absolutely know I'm not going to play and I can uh, just tell you no thanks. All right, so everybody with the archer is going to go before them. We might drop one of these guys by then. Uh, use my one-time use mana gem. Uh, sure. Well, there's all the heals. Just won't have the uh, energy to use them. 
Let's check his cards. <coughs> well, this kind of sucks. I need to heal, but I think I might be better served to get some more protection on him. Let's, uh, let's get the healing in. Three points, so either heavy strike... Maim, drop his speed by three. Ooh, that gets him back behind. Front monster only. That's this guy. That puts him into a tie with Andron. I'm not sure if it would move him or move him uh, the order or not. That's right. Dropped him way back there. The back guy will still go, and he's going to do hurry up, <laughs> speed three, and a bullet shot. Random hero, 12 damage. I have not much protection on anybody. Uh, let's go with that. And zero, 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 one, one. Well, that makes it pretty easy. points <laughs> that will kill the front guy so we definitely need to do that and then let's put up <clears throat> I don't think he's going to do much elemental damage six shield I'll get us block at the start of my next turn everybody gets to go before him so other than her What do we got? Divine Grace. <clears throat> it's pretty good defensive choices. I don't know what he's going to do. I got three guys going to go. I'm not sure I can do enough damage with these three guys to drop him. Or these two guys. So... Let's get the heal off first. And another heal. And we'll throw a barrier up on... think we're gonna get him this round too much damage still <clears throat> and man we've been taking hit points round five gets us the good bonus satisfactory poor not worth the f well I mean these are free but 
I guess we'll uh, fire blast him. We will transmit to you. Eh, I think we will get him this round. the looks of that one no upgrades no upgrades oh leap slam Ooh, it's glowy purple what does that mean source card back monster only became uh, any monster that's huge oh we gotta take that absolutely taking leap slam all right, Blade Fury, Slice, Quick Shot, not impressed. Roll Defense, Heat Wave, Dark Pact. Mm, for the Mage. That's uh, one of those cards where the Supernova would be somewhat useful. Do I go Fire Mage? Eh, let's go Fire Mage. Bad Augury. Um, a ray of hope grants to what? Courage. Ah, uh, holy shadow and mind resistance bonus. Got it. Heals eight. Two points for some courage bonus. Dispels negative effects and uh, some healing. I kind of like that one. All right, equipment time again, huh? Hmm. Mega Staff. Max hit points, 14. Combat start, gain 9 pierce, 9 thorns. Shoulder plate mail. Ah, the horseshoe. 100% success in single character event rolls. I like the spyglass. Uh, we're definitely going to pick up some shoulder plate. 580. So it's either going to replace that. I don't know that I need him to have that. Maybe he would be better served. He's got the speed bonus, but he's already really quick. I don't think losing the one speed would be that detrimental. He has none. I don't know. Maybe the wizard should grab it. I'd probably get more use out of the thorns if I put it on Magnus with all of the front enemy cards that are out there. And I don't know what happens to the existing equipment. I'm assuming it just gets disappeared. What do you think? The shoulder plate's the only thing jumping out at me, but it's also the, the more rare item, so no surprise. Clergy Amulet, all resistances plus 4%, and Sanctify. Attacker heals one hit point per charge when the target is hit by an enemy. Remove a charge when this happens. Hmm. I'm not too excited by that one. Yeah, I like the share share defense option. Does that? Sh I thought it just shared. Def uh, unless we're talking about a different <laughs> different card, I didn't think thorns would be considered uh, a defense like that. Ah, haven't seen that one yet. Then he 
Yeah, let's let's have a plate mail wielding uh, mage. That that amuses me. Reginald, welcome to shoulder plate armor. That'll be fun. Anything else? I mean, the Mega Staff, I guess. He doesn't have a weapon yet either. Should we really beef up our wizard? Alright, we'll let Evelyn have a few more hit points as well as that 100% uh, success chance. If we're early enough in the run, we might get some use out of that. I think that's it. Alright, Bended Camp. Fresh meat. When entering the Bended Camp, you see a really big werewolf yelling and giving orders to other werewolves. He notices your presence and looks at you with a mocking face. That's Yogger, the butcher of Sanenthia, and he's been terrorizing the Sanenthia forest for a long time. It's time to put a stop to Yogger and disperse the bandits once and for all. Running away now would only make things worse. Combat, close your, <laughs> your eyes have already met and there's not much more to say. Run, you didn't expect to fight a big werewolf. Maybe there's a slim chance of escape. <laughs> slim? I know him. He served under me in the Wolf Wars. Maybe I can reason with him. Sure. Well, 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 if it isn't Captain Magnus in a flesh, do you think your fancy words would change me? I see you're still as foolish as ever. You don't seem to remember who gave you that scar. This time, I will kill you and take the wolf slayer with me. Fortunately, you had time to prepare for combat. <laughs> all right, then we got a little bit of extra XP. Oh, all by himself, huh? He's, uh, he's soloing our group. Mini boss. Dinner is ready. Oh, summon sharpshooters. All right, so yeah. I'm a sharpshooter and heal. Zounds. He's going to heal for 30 and do another thing. But he only gets to do those once. Those cards get burned on use. All right. So he's bringing out the sharpshooter in the middle of combat. Unless I can slow him down, huh? Uh, Well, we got to go with the mark. Three points. So that kind of sucks. That means I get to choose one. I think I'd rather get the rupture in and of course the shiv. Give me the howl. No howl. Ah. My deck is too large. I'm not getting the cards I want. Leap slam. That would be a pretty fun one to get in early. Blunt damage taken plus one per charge and we're going to drop five charges on him. And later I can hopefully get him with a shield bash and a heavy strike to uh, maximize on that. It's most of my available points this round, though. I think we need to. Let's, let's stack them up with as many negatives as we can. Uh, Let's see. I think he's just going to summon, summon. Maybe he has an attack, but it's likely to be another buff of some kind for this first round. Let's go ahead and get, uh, get the fast strike in. And let's intercept damage on me. Let's see. Four points. I can... Hmm. I can use everything in my hand. I don't want to use the rain, though. So, Frostbolt him. Charge battery. Charge battery. That'll give me a nice, good, solid amount of uh, energy for the next round. And uh, we've stacked up quite a list. Hopefully he doesn't have some kind of a purge effect <laughs> option up there. What else can we do to him? We've actually got him down half already. Too bad we can't get a, a, a round one victory. I think this might be one of those fights where as long as we kill him, the fight instantly ends. Regardless of what minions he has out. So I'm going to focus every single thing I've got on him. 
All right, four points. Uh, hmm. Not worried about defending this round, which leaves Holy Smite, Holy Smite. Get 30 more points on him. Put an extra card on my hmm, either Ranger or Warrior. Actually, I might put it on the Mage because she's going to have a whole bunch of energy. Yeah, let's, uh, let's Holy Smite. Holy Smite. And Clarity the Mage. What was that? Come here, you. <laughs> Let the feast begin. All monsters, 22 armor, two rounds of resistance, and uh, extra speed. Nice. Yogger. Okay, Yogger. That's not cool, because now these new guys get to go before my big guy goes again. Oh, crap. Yogger gets to go before most of my guys get to go again. Not good. <laughs> Very much not good. Hmm. Well, we've got to do that. We've got to hit him with more fun stuff. And then I'm down to front monsters and deflect. I should have deflected. Should have deflected first. Okay, this is gonna suck. Good lord, they all get to go before me. <laughs> Alright, they're pretty stacked up now. Oh, they got resistances, they got slashing bonuses, they got speed bonuses. For one more round, at least, on the resistances. Assuming he doesn't reapply them. A lot of damage to go still. Uh, we got the Howl. Let's get that out. Three more points. Give everybody some protection. Enrage, draw a card. Yeah, we gotta do Enrage next. That didn't help a ton. I can do my two hard hitters plus an intercept. Or my protection, my hard hitter and an intercept. Let's, uh... It's all front strike, so... Get that down. Don't know what they're gonna do. Put an intercept on... You... Get the rend out. There's the fireball. Three of my five points. Think I'm gonna drop him before they're gonna get their full round. Maybe if he gets the big back strike, we might be able to get him down this round. All right, we got no fire effects to deal with, so healing rain is minimally useful. Got uh, heals, foresight. He's telling me what he's gonna do. I uh, gotta drop heals. So we're going to heal and we're going to flash. Get uh, you a heal first. More damage there. Alright, Shiv in the back row. Oh, I only got two points. That first. You... You... 
So, front monster. I need to get a rear monster attack in. Two more points. So, eight will land, or... Oh, front monster only. Keep focusing. Come on, Magnus. <laughs> God damn defends. <laughs> no. Uh, front monster only. Crap. More defense. All heroes, big damage. All front hero, big damage. Lots of bleed. And we got all this coming in as well. I didn't drop a single thing this round. We're going to take the full brunt again. And this isn't even a finale fight. <laughs> We've still got a big fight coming and we're going to be hammered. Well, I'll do this. I think I've got to do a barricade for two of my points, unfortunately. I'm not going to get any damage in this round. Ugh. Yeah, this sucks. This is gonna suck. Jeez. Owie. Again, I wasted it. Damn it, my little carryover. Uh, so not good. I don't think I want to cast this. It's a global heat wave, flying burn all over. I'm not really set up for that. All right, do some things, do some stuff. Let's see. Ah, damn it. Once again, I forgot to check all the cards and use the one that increases ability based on my cards in hand. Come on, dude. 
Got the heavy strike, but it's my entire amount. It's only going to do 14. It's not enough. And we're going to have no protection up. So close. Missed it. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Oh. Oh, well. Kablamo! Death's door on draw. So, Andrew has been crushed. If your team survives, you will resurrect with 70% of your total life. But remember, nothing comes without a price, and you'll carry this stigma for the rest of your adventure. Go on draw. Lose an energy. Suffer. Alright. Yeah! And, of course, now he's gonna die. We, we couldn't get him one round earlier. Still not sure if the fight's going to end immediately when I kill this guy. Sure I am hoping so. So we could finish him. Uh, I don't have a cheaper way of finishing him. No, it's not going to end when he dies? Alright. Who's next? Middle guy. I've had some fights that do with summoned creatures because these are summonings. You kill the summoner and it ends the fight. I'm going to find out. We're going to try to kill him. You're all wrong. <laughs> oh, only kind of got it one one round sooner. <laughs> Oh, I knew that one hit was going to kill somebody. Vile Lance. Super upgrade. Again, I haven't really been aiming for the dark stuff. That's a lot of poison. For a single point. Oh, we have to take that, no matter what. We also have prayer protection. Nah, we got to take that. Alright, what do we got? War paint. Gain powerful, damage and heal done. So it's 10% gain. Yeah, 10% the first round and 5% uh, the second round for damaging and healing. For him, it would be damage. Helping hand, dispel slow, grant a card, zero cost on any hero. Um, That's fairly cool, too. I'm not enamored with any of these. Icicle, huh? <laughs> I both apply to them and myself. A chill effect. And I'm not going to worry about those either. So... Zero cost. Damage bonus. I think I'm going to take the helping hand. All right, the butcher's death. You did it. Yager is no more. With the butcher dead, the remaining bandits flee, and the Sinenthia forest will be a little safer. Now you can check the camp for gold and other valuable items. Time to claim your reward. All right, so gold and shards were scattered throughout the camp, and you also found a large chest where the bandits kept all the things they looted over time. So we got gold, shards, uh, experience. I still don't know what to call this symbol. It's got to be experience. Yeah, it's level experience. Uh, and uh, one of the town supplies. So we're up to four town supplies now. Or upgrades. What do we got this time? We've got one upgrade. Yogger's Cleaver, huh? So that would replace his uh, Wolf Slayer. Random hero gains a card. Flash damage plus two. And apply a bleed. 
Um, he does a fair amount of slash. I've got a bit of uh, bash damage mixed into his deck at the moment as well. Max hit points, all resistances, and shuffle howl into your deck. I, I do like the uh, howl stuff. So we'd only be losing 5% of that. Yeah, I, I think I'll do, uh, we'll do the wolfskin cloak for him. I'm thinking of maybe giving the cleaver to him. He doesn't have a weapon upgrade yet. He's got some slash attacks, not just all ranged attacks. Don't really care. Every two turns, gain one. So every other turn, you gain a free energy. That's pretty powerful. I've already got accessories for my two mages, though. <laughs> Every two turns, put a carp into your hand. Uh, okay. What, what the hell's a carp card? I'd have to go look it up in the uh, the compendium. Uh, cards. Uh, they are by name, so I see no carp. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what a carp card would do. Bunny! <laughs> so apparently it's pets. That's what that symbol means. Pets. All right, it's probably somewhere. I don't know where. I'm not going to worry about the fishing reel, fishing rod, carp thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm not too excited about a lot of this stuff. Let's go ahead and give him the cleaver. She'll take what she need: a weapon and a pet. We have no pet upgrades. The mega staff. She doesn't have one of those already. Hmm. All right, mega staff for you. And you already have everything, so we'd be replacing. And we're not def definitely not replacing that. No, I like the uh, three hit point recovery for the team at the end of fights. So that's an upgrade. We'd gain one hit point plus resistances. Sure. All right. Now that we've been smashed of about 40% of the hit points of the entire team, <laughs> we're heading into the final fight. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So I showed this earlier. Here we go. We have leveled the character up for this particular run. So now we have an either or choice. I can either add a follow up card. Self, the next attack, reduce the cost of the highest cost attack in your hand by three until discarded. So that'll make most of my heavy attack ones free if I can get follow up to appear with one of those expensive cards. Or Wolf Guard, hero, all resistances plus 10%. Damaged by when damaged by others, gain 15 uh, block plus a resistance. Lasts for four uses. Um, that's pretty powerful for the long term of a fight. This is a one time use. You get a cheap heavy attack. I think I'll take Wolfguard. Andrin, maneuver. Self, when you play a card for every energy used, draw a card, gain five block and two evasion. That two evasion is really powerful too. Last one use. And uh, Wild Hunt. Self again, enchantment. 
Mark charges plus one when you play a card for every energy used. Apply a mark to a random monster. Hmm. Good maneuver. All right, elemental proliferation. Basically, the elemental damage plus two and damage with hit apply uh, shock, burn, and chill effects. Uh, damage with hit, yeah. I like it. Enchant weapons. Discover three card enchantments and place one into your hand. Now nah, let's go with the elemental proliferation. Fire! More fire. All right, Divine Retribution. So this is our healer. So self, when damaged by others, deal 10, bla or 10 uh, holy damage. Gain a bless. Four uses. Focus heal. The next healing spell is 100% extra healing. So double the heal effectiveness. Pretty powerful single use. And the Divine Retribution. If they get hit, then we deal back damage like thorns, but of the uh, holy variety. And we get bless. Hmm, I like them both. Go with Divine Retribution. Alright. Ilmer's Awakening. The obelisk is in sight, but something very dangerous is blocking the way. Ilmer, an old treant, once known as a protector of the Sanenthia Forest, has awakened and been tainted by the energy emanating from the now active obelisk. Besides Ilmer, there's a trunky and a dryad protecting him. You can't see any way to avoid the confrontation, but maybe you can make the fight easier or worse, depending on how you approach him. Straight up fight, or we could have a 86% chance to rest first. For attacking. That would be huge. <laughs> Very much probably going to do that. Or do an ambush. Risky, but try to hide in the forest to start the fight with stealth. Uh, definitely not. So we're taking the 86% chance to get some rest. Please, please, please. Please, please, please. No threes. Oh, we got it. Oh, just barely. Thank you, Zero. <laughs> we hit it exactly. I didn't want a three. All right, you managed to rest for a while. That gets us back to tip-top condition, pretty much. Just shy, max, one point below. So, perfect. Well, that worked out pretty well. All right, here we go. The big boss battle for this particular map. On this one, I'm less sure. I'm pretty sure, again, that I just have to kill him if I can focus fire him down. But uh, I'm a little less for sure. Frenzied Termites, Middle Hero... Alright, Entangling Roots, Fastest Hero, Apply Slow, Overgrowth, Moonfire, so we've got Middle Hero, Random Hero, Random Hero, so we got some light damage in coming from various sources and then two cards I can't see. And we're faster than everybody except for the Dryad. Alright, I assume Fire, Fire for all this tree stuff. Really? No fire? Negative? That's susceptible to fire. Mostly, and also holy. Fire and holy. Alright, so fire and holy is our focus with... They have... Or at least he has less protection against uh, Slash. Blunt is better against the Dryad. And doesn't really matter. Alright, fire is pretty much the main thing. And blunt against the Dryad. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I'm not going to be able to get to that dryad before it's going to go. Immune to bleed. That's right. The trees don't bleed. All my bleed effects are going to be fairly useless. Uh, 
Um. <coughs> I guess we're gonna rupture and slice. We got the howl. Oh, we got the other howl. I might be able to change the order. Yeah, let's do it now. Intercept for... Oh, she's still ahead of him. Random and fastest. So fastest is him. He's got four points now, but we'll try to intercept a few more. All right. We have no slow options. Four points will spend everything that I'm holding currently, so using up my mana gem is not going to be helpful. Rain is not going to be helpful. Get the fires going. I think I'm going to put this on Saving it, saving it. Do I do the heat wave? Yeah, why not? Everybody gets to burn. Uh. All right, we lasted through... Oh, fire damage. We lasted through that without too much problem. Um, do I drop more foresight on the big guy? Do these other cards, or do I put some on the dryad? What's coming? Barkskin, defense, resistance, and thorns. Sprout is a regen. Ooh, eight regeneration. Ouch, and even more thorns. Flower shuriken on a random hero, and uh, more damage and healing. I wonder if he's gonna, just going to keep stacking that and stacking that and stacking that. And that's basically the timer for this boss, is trying to get him down before he stacks too much of this stuff. Card is gone, card is gone. So these two are one use. That's also one use. Alright, so we can't just keep stacking that. Um, But you got to survive the initial rounds. Jeez, a sing first round win against a boss. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Wonder how long you'd have to play and how how much meta progression you'd have to get to get a first round kill on a boss. Let's see. All right, so we're on the healer. Boss is up next. All that crazy stuff. And the dryad's gonna go. He's about to get a whole bunch of protection and regeneration. All right, let's uh, go ahead and get retribution up. Ooh, nifty! A new, new, new notification symbol thingy showing the number of uses or activations. I like it. Uh, we're gonna vitalize. Let's give it to. Might put it on myself. Yeah, let's go ahead and put it on ourselves. 
And then we'll throw a barrier up for the mage. So we used up one of our charges and we have our one bless. He's now pretty stacked. He's going to get eight hit points regen. He's also got thorns, which does damage back. All right. Wolf guard is up. Hero ability. Seven points. Nice. I think we definitely need to get this up on... That's right, I can put it on any hero. Um... Hmm. Let's put this on... What do you think? The mage? The cleric? Let's stack up some mage defense. Alright, six points still. I think we definitely want barricade up. I'd love to do heavy strike on the boss, but I think I might try to clear the little guys before I go after the boss. I'm wondering if these are just going to keep stacking up. If I hit him now, my my block will uh, take care of the eight incoming damage. But then I need to get additional damage down. Pretty good chunk on the dryad too. Yeah, let's let's go for these two first, I think. One left. What do you got coming? Front hero, random hero. Self, lots of dispelling, purging, and healing. Reign of thorns, all heroes. Ouch. So he's going to kick out all those thorns he's holding on to and deal damage to everybody. <laughs> Another front hero. All right. Uh, we're going defense. Let's see. Put the deflection out. Should I use this one again? So, for every energy used, draw a card, gain in, or gain defense, and uh, evasion. The evasion is going to help a ton. Let's see. Three points, so we can shiv. And aim shot. That gets me lots of evasion. Prevents four hits. Uh, sure. Now's a great time to Adrenaline. Let's, uh... F ah, 12 points! 12 points! It's gonna take me both in order to drop that front guy. The bleed effect isn't gonna be helpful. Dang it. Can't quite get him with just one. I'm gonna waste a bunch of damage that I could be applying elsewhere. Uh, all right, fine. Let's get rid of him. We're still looking pretty good. Big guy's coming up next. So, everybody gets hit with ranged. And front here is so he's going to take 24 up front. We got 25 protection against that kind of damage, so he'll be fine. I just want to get 10 protection on everybody else at a minimum, and we're already there, so we're good. Other than the stacking bonuses, he's starting to build up. All right, time to concentrate on this stupid dryad. Three whole points. Uh, don't need healing yet, so is it going to be Holy Smite and Flash? Yeah. 
And do we go... Let's see. If I Holy Smite, we're going to take eight points back. Um, I can't afford to take that, so we're going to go after the front one. I got to set up the right defenses to account for uh, all this incoming thorn damage. No problem. Uh-oh, all my sight abilities are gone. Bring the fire. Oh, I like those numbers. Yeah, got a fireball. 20 direct. Um, yeah. All of my other guys are going before the Dryad. They'll easily kill the Dryad. So let's set up... Transmission on you. Expert Trekker. Leap Slam. Um... Get rid of Rend. Oops, wrong key. I think I'll keep the rest. Alright, Archer. So, 19 points, huh? We can't quite get there. Mark over there. Hey, hey. All righty. So I need to kill the front guy, which I can't do, damn it, without doing the big slam. Crap. Ugh. Well, that sucks. Get rid of the slow and get you a bonus card. I was really hoping to start in on the big guy when now that all the thorns are gone. But if I do that, I gotta let this dryad have a turn. I can only get one of my big hits in. So, is it worth leaving the uh, the Dryad up for another round in order to drop this in on the big guy? Oh, Dryads do bleed? Hmm. Alright, that changes things. So we can do Dryad. She's done at the start of her turn. I, I didn't I thought they were also a wood creature and immune to bleed. Apparently not. And then we're definitely doing Leap Slam. I want to get this five vulnerability on. Or five crack for extra blunt damage in the future plus vulnerability. Good hit. And intercept for uh, intercept for the mage. Uh. All right, Curse of Agony. Dryad's dead, so I got my mage and my cleric going before these four cards are going to land. There might be more summons in here. I got three points total. Elemental Proliferation, we've got to get that out. Let's see. Let's 
I think it's going to be definitely Curse of Agony. And then Charge of Battle. Alright, Cleric, what you got? What you got? We got Foresight! What did we learn? Barkskin incoming, Sprout incoming. That's that regen. That's going to burn the card. And a Moon Catalyst. So we've got no damage incoming other than um, once he casts these thorns, he's going to be back up to the eight thorns. I'll have to be careful with uh, who I hit him with. I just stack up some defense before I go in on the attack. And there's one possible attack card or summon card there. We have another pretty good round to try to nail him. Uh, let's see. Nobody is slowed or insane, so my clarity would just gain somebody a card draw and go away. Which is fine. Um, let's drop a card draw. Let's drop that there, and there, and then heal there. Alright, what the hell did he stack up? 30% more damage and healing, reinforcement for the resist for one round. Thorns, regen that we have to overcome. He's still got the poison on him. He's still got the crack for blunt damage boost. So I need to pretty much land everything on him. But blunt, electricity. Um, and I got to make sure I've got thorn resistance. So who's up? Archer. Don't have much thorn resistance on this guy yet. I'm not certain ranged attacks give the thorn damage. We'll have to give it a try. So if I do... That's melee. If I do a ranged attack... I've only got three points. Um... Yeah, we got hit. All right. So, does not work that way. Uh, he's down to seven thorns. That's still too much. I don't want to take the hit. I don't want to trade 11 damage for that. All right, hit him for seven. He'd do seven to me. I don't consider that a good trade. How about you, buddy? Can you get some defense up first? You can. Anybody slowed? Nobody has slowed. Get helping hand myself and get another card next round. But I think I'd rather have you get another card. All right, three points. I can defend. Oh, Rain of Thorns coming in. Everybody's going to take hits next round. Uh, so if I wait for the Rain of Thorns to land, then I can hit him before we get Thorns up again. I think I'm going to go defense heavy this round. Um, Don't want rain. I don't want to put the fire out that's on him currently. Curse of Agony. I don't have any protection on myself yet either. Uh, inflict nine plus a fly. More bleed and more poison. That's. I think that's a worthwhile trade-off. The seven incoming damage to get uh, nine direct plus... 12 the next round and even more the next round and this this will help me keep ahead of his regen so that i need to do even if even if it's going to hurt that's why i gave this guy some healing and card bonuses so i can compensate for the thorns 
Beyond that, though, I don't think I'm going to do any of these. I don't want to keep taking... Well, that's not a bad trade-off. Six for 16. Plus two more chill. That one, six for 14. And I got one more shot. Oh, yeah, that's right. Cold Spark. I'm not sure how much damage this is going to do to me. Let's find out. Five more. All right. Well, we keep stacking up the uh, the negative effects. I don't have any any f large amount of fire on him. Uh, and we'll go ahead and do the frostbolt. Now we're up to five for seventeen. All right, magic man. Where's the heal? <laughs> I don't want healing rain. I want to heal, damn it. Yeah, I mean, I can shield somebody, but that's... I wanted to do a ray of hope also. Uh, crap. How much is coming in? 12 plus a lead and two other cards I don't know about. Yeah, we got to do that. That'll stack on more ridiculous poison and dark and slows. That's worth the hit. We got him down to 90, do we? Two more points. So... Oof. We can get another 21 off of him, but I wouldn't put any defense in. I wouldn't get any benefit off the dispels. I don't think the courage would help me against this guy, so we'd only get the 8 healing for the 2 cost. I don't think that's worth it. I think I'm going to go with shield awarding on, uh, on the mage. All right, what you got? Oh, that's right. He had that big heal coming in. Okay. Thorns are gone temporarily, and a lot of my negatives got purged out as well. That stacked up... Uh, stacked up poison got, dis got uh, taken out. So we've still got the crack. We've still got lightning damage. I got some chill. Uh, and all of my guys get to go. All right, so now's the time where I got to stack up all the damage on the back end. So. Let's get that in for sure. Oh, that's right. He doesn't bleed, but I had poison on him. He was taking poison. Everything else is front, man, front damage except for this. So we're just going to put everything on him that we can. Come on, Magnus. There's the heavy strike on any monster. That'll help. That's my entire turn, though. So these guys are weak. Okay. They've got thorns as well. I want to ignore these and just focus fire him down at this point. So... Let's do... Yeah, I gotta do that. And let's toss Intercept over here. Fireball? No fireball. Three more points. So that would be a Frostbolt. Oh, no, I could do the Mana Gem, but that's... Uh, that would let me do everything, I guess. Yeah. Time is precious. Keep stacking them. And let's put an elemental ward on. <laughs> oh, 
All right, what you got for me? More foresight. What's incoming? Good old bark skin combo again. Bark skin and sprout. So we're back to having him having a bunch of points. Moonbeam hit everybody for holy and fire damage. It applies fire and a random hero. All right, so we got some incoming damage when he gets his turn. And unfortunately, this is the only guy I've got, and he has not enough damage. 20. Oh, he's going to be. Oh, I think we have enough. I think we have enough. Holy smite him. Flash him. Good job. Cleric for the win. Love it. That fight went easier than the previous fight. <laughs> oh, Cleric got the big kill. Performance bonus. Great. Plus 40% gold, 40% XP, plus one cards tier. Uh, lethal shot monster deal 27 range damage apply 26 poison 26 poison <laughs> plus vulnerable uh, absolutely we're taking that pandemonium insanity deal 11 in uh, mind damage apply 3 insanity 2 vulnerability oh and repeats again so that's oh, 6 points good lord no wonder. Yeah, we'll see how many times we get to use that lethal shot. <laughs> We're going to have to battery bank him from the, uh, the mage. And hope we time it right. And a six cost. So the deal there where it says repeat one, basically you do the first, it does everything twice. So it deals 11 damage, then it applies three insanity, then it applies two vulnerability, and then it repeats. It does the exact same thing again. So we're talking 22 mind damage, uh, six insanity, and four vulnerability, which would drop all the resistances by 20%. 20% the first turn, 10% second turn. I don't know if I'd be able to get that one off. Greater heal, 27. Overcharge, pay one extra energy to apply the stated effect. Huh, never seen that before. Overcharge. That is a lot of healing. So you're looking at a five heal total to get uh, 25 health on somebody. Innervate? Isn't it supposed to be enervate? I don't think it's, uh, I don't think innervate's a word. So one energize, gain an extra energy, and three regen. For one cost, that's actually pretty good for a, a, a single cost card. That's a tough one there. Prismatic field, invisibility, and elemental bolt. I was trying to get this one stacked up on elemental stuff. So nine lightning, nine fire, and then apply lightning, burn, and chill for two. I like that one. Gain stealth. I haven't dealt with stealth yet. Ah, Prismatic Field protects everybody. Puts up a uh, little dome around the party. Protect against fire, cold, and lightning. Yeah, look up Enervate. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is... Uh, I mean, it's, it's energizing. I guess the regen part would be the... Uh, nah, I don't know. I've always, I've always re heard it referred to as Enervate for this kind of a thing. However, uh, so butchering, a lot of good stuff in this list. Random monster, deal eight, seven. Oh, that's another one of those double ups. So you're dealing 16 slash and 14 bleed. Blood rage, lose 16 hit points. 
Suffer four bleed, gain two energy. Wow. Oh, am I backwards? Enervate is to feel drained of energy? Hmm. All right. Sounds good. 18 defense, one fortify. Block is not removed at the end of the round. So basically, you get to keep the defense for two rounds. Ah, some pretty cool cards in here. We're seeing some fun stuff. Um. Well... Elemental Bolt. Butchering. I don't think I can try to go for Pandemonium. <laughs> I just don't think I'll be able to hit that six cost often enough. Greater Heal's pretty bad as well. We'll try it, though. All right, the path is clear. Ilmer will never wake up again. A shame that once a tall and wise treant like him has had to end this way because of the mysterious reactivation of the obelisk. Between Ilmer's roots, you see a large golden chest appear. You're one step closer to your objective. So we got rewards, plus we're going to get some items to choose from. So gold, shards, and uh, character XP. Three more supplies for the town upgrades. All right, what do we got that's blue? We got three blue ones, the Shield of Thorns, Yggdrasil Root, and Cup of Death. <laughs> charges plus two. Charges on monsters explode at 16. Yeah, I'll have to do a Shadow shadow Mage at some point, just stacking up all the Shadow stuff, because there's a lot of interesting effects that happen at various levels of uh, Shadow Charge. You really got to commit to it, it seems like, to get anywhere with it. Shield of Thorns for the tank. Max HP. All right, we're reading the wrong one here. Resistances plus six. Two times a turn when you play a defense, gain thorns. Yeah, that's pretty powerful. It's the armor space, though, and I just picked up the wolfskin cloak. So, Ilmer's Branch for the healer as a weapon. Uh... You, currently, you've got just the Mega Staff. Why the hell did I give him the Mega Staff? That's dumb. <laughs> how, did, how did he end up with the Mega Staff? I definitely don't mind this one, then. So, heal done plus one. Let me play a healing spell, gain regeneration. So, yeah, let's do Ilmer's Branch for him. Um, Yggdrasil's... Yeah, let's do Yggdrasil. Let's do this one. Max hit points, plus eight. And a combat start gains regen and thorns. I like it. And uh, we have any rings? Fancy rings? We've got, what, one ring? Forest crown. Eight hit points and more speed. Make him a super speedy demon guy. Yeah, let's do that one for him. She would be replacing something. Our only choices now are, what, armor and weapons? So weapon, she's got the uh, elemental bonus damage and armor. She's got the uh, evasion. So the first attack against her, she she evades and sidesteps. Um, I don't know if I would take something. You can't play. She's not. She has almost no defense, so she wouldn't get the use of the uh, bottom section of that. She's not death or yeah, death focused, so the cup of death isn't gonna happen. I don't know. Woolly hat. I'd rather have just a totally evade damage on the first round rather than uh, just the eight block. Yeah, let's take gold for her. Alright. Off to the obelisk. The Sanenthia Obelisk. You find yourselves in front of the obelisk. After centuries of inactivity, it is now bursting with energy and its runes engraved in the stone glow brightly. 
As you read the runes aloud, the wall of the obelisk warps and distorts, creating several portals. The time has come to cross the obelisk. Where will you go? So this is where you get to pick. Uh, I, we have that one quest that mentioned the water area, so I'm pretty sure we need to go here to the green portal where the small stagnant water comes out. Um, so we've got, what, fire, water, and ice. Um, so we'll go ahead and pick this one. I think this is the one I picked in my one test game as well. This is as far as I made it. I picked this, I saw the next map, and that's where I stopped uh, before starting up a new run today for you fine folks to watch. So we'll go ahead and pick that just because we have that quest. Use to help rebuild a house, huh? I can't see my quest info from this screen. I have to remember it, do I? All right, well, that's what we're going to pick. You cross the portal before you realize it, you are already in another place. Act 2, the Aquar Fall Marsh. The group went across the obelisk and in an instant found themselves in another place, far from Sanenthia's forest. One of the mysteries of the obelisk has just been revealed to them. In ancient times, the obelisk was used as a means of transportation, since reaching this land by road would take several days. They searched for signs that the princess or Lord Henshek had been there and found two pairs of footprints leading away from the area. The group looked toward the horizon and saw that there was another obelisk in this area, and that it was also active. Undoubtedly, the princess and Lord Henshek had something to do with the activation of the obelisks, and the next destination of the group was clear. And bingo, bango, bongo, we have a new map. And we're going from the top section. We have a new town that we can, uh, we can upgrade and fiddle with. And our endpoint is the ancient temple for the boss battle, and then another uh, tra map transition. And I don't know if this one goes to yet another set of maps like this, a full map, or if it goes to like a mini map area for an end battle type of sequence. I haven't made it there yet. This is as far as I've seen. Um, yeah. Everybody's full healed. And uh, let's go there. Let's look at our town upgrades now. So we've accumulated between my two runs seven town upgrade points. Let's do removing cards in the starting town is free. I like that one. Let's do hard transformation reduction in cost. I still don't know what the divination thing does. I'm assuming it. I, I, I don't know. Till I do it, I don't know what it does. Let's see. That would add up over time. Yeah, let's do a transformation cost reduction. And go ahead and pick up this. Now that we've spent three points, we've unlocked the next row. Oh, we can only pursue the ones that we've picked from in previous columns. That I wasn't expecting. I thought it was just spend three in the previous column and I could pick anything I want below. But that's not how it works. So it's all similar function, just different um, increasing benefits. So 15%, 30%, uncommon, rare, epic. But it's all the same basic idea. All right. Which makes sense because, I mean, it's bonuses within a specific ability. Uh, unlock the pet shop. Ooh, do we need a pet shop? And do these cost three in addition to needing to have spent three? That would be kind of rough, I think. Well, eh, maybe not. I don't know how often we're going to get these things. Max of 500. Yeah, it may cost three. Uh, cost of curing injuries. Oh, that's right. Don't I have one guy that's injured? Or did that not count because we won the fight? Exit. Who died? I think it was... Was it Andrin? Oh, yep. Andrin has something going on. Death's door on draw, an injury. All right, so we need to try to figure out how to fix an injury. So, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and pay for that. Well, yep, it does cost that much. All right, so we're down to one point. Do we save it or do we spend it on one of the top ones? Let's um, look to now. Hmm. Yeah, sure. All right, we spent our points. Um, let's 
Hey there, Andrin. Uh, death store. 212 to remove death store. Sure. All right, so his injury card's gone. Cost us a little cash. So in this location, we can uh, modify the cards. So if I put something simple in, like uh, defend. Oh, this is for removing cards, not for modifying. Uh, do we want to spend money? We're at 21 cards on Magnus here. Hmm. Let's look at some other stuff first. You see, this part might take a little while in between runs <laughs> for all the... If, if four players were doing co-op, I assume they can click on whatever they want and everybody's doing things simultaneously. I haven't yet uh, connected with anybody to do the co-op part, so I don't know exactly how they handle that section or this section during co-op games. Uh, but I'm assuming everybody can do whatever they want on their own screens. Um, so, craft cards for your deck... That lets me craft anything I want. Show only available. All right, show me uh, ultra rare. So we're up to uh, that level, apparently. Don't have either of those yet. What is that? Mythic, epic, rare, uncommon, common. Exploit openings, front monster, deal X, apply X, X equals target. Uh, sight, huh? Hmm. That's interesting. Hmm. All right, so this just lets you flat grab cards for uh, shard costs so you can uh, better tailor whatever specific theme you've got for your deck. So for like the, uh, for Evelyn here, if I'm trying to go pure um, elemental, I can grab the specific cards that will move me further towards that goal. So elemental bolt, for example. Um... This takes a little bit more time and theory crafting than I really have the uh, scope to do right now. It's probably a pretty important thing to do. Unstable power. Roll of speed. I like that combo there. Searing touch on the front monster, nine fire damage, and then three of the burn. Then you hit him with that for ten more damage. Apply X burn. X equals your... I still, I still don't understand why it says X equals your burn times half. <laughs> I'm, I'm still puzzling how to figure out this Searing Nova math. Your burn times. Why, why, why am I on fire? <laughs> Hmm. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's what we can do here. So you can sort by energy or rarity, um, buy whatever you want to add in and then use the, uh, church to purge out cards. So that's the magic forge, uh, that, so add cards, remove cards. Still don't know what this does. Fast basic. Sure. Whatever. Oh, this is what it does. And the more money you spend, the more, the higher the level the card opportunities may be. Hmm. All right, well, that answers that question. Glad I clicked the button. 
Now we're going to transmute gold into shards, <laughs> as I don't take any of these upgrades. Uh-oh. Zero cost. Set up. Draw three cards. Gain energize one. So you gain an energy the next turn. Place one from your hand on top of your deck. All right. So yeah, set up. Draw three. Pick one of them. Put it on top of your deck. So you make sure you grab that next round. Then you also have an extra energy. I like that card. We're going to take that one. I didn't even look at the other ones. Uh, another Vile Lance. Prayer of Healing heals all heroes for six points. And Condemnation. More dark magic. I have got to do a death magic run. Um, <clears throat> He's already at 20 cards. Two cost for essentially 24 healing, assuming everybody's hurt, is a pretty good number. Or two energy, that is. Sure. Elemental Ward, Shatter, and Squall. I do not care about any of those. I'm not doing specifically Ice Focus at the moment. Rampage! 24 damage for two on a random monster, huh? Good old Leap Slam. I do like Leap Slam, but that three cost is tough to pay sometimes. But it does help knocking down those healers and leaders in the back row when it's got the back monster option or uh, designation. Shield Slam hits all monsters, huh? Oh my goodness. Deal X blunt damage. X equals your block times 0 0.3. So you can, you can jump your block up pretty quick with a few cards. So we'd take a mix, but let's say you could get to 20, 25 pretty easily. That'd be 12 damage or so to everybody, all the enemies, and then you would lose the block. I don't know. I mean, I, I could see if you combine that with a few other cards and you build it right, that could be pretty powerful, but uh, I don't think I'm going to deal with that. I don't want a basic leap slam another one. Yeah, let's just take the shards. All right, so now we know. So that's an opportunity for everybody to grab a card. More money, better card selection. Uh, and that's the equipment list. So this is where... Ah, uh, re-roll, 800 bucks. All right, so that's the cost that we were lowering. So if we, there's nothing in here that we like, we can request a re-roll, which is even more money coming out of the pool that you're using to, uh, to buy things with. Huh. So uh, ring... Brass amulets. Slash charges, huh? Hmm. <laughs> Breastplate. A lot of a lot of max hit points. Good resistances. Slows you down. <laughs> a two-point swap. You'd go from like 21 to 18. Still be faster than most everybody. <clears throat> Longbow. Range damage plus two. One time a turn when you play a ranged attack, draw a card. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> It'd be pretty interesting, especially if you're flush with zero cost range cards like the Shiv and a few others. Get the bow damage in, or range damage in, plus draw <clears throat> shivs and all that stuff. And then you could just keep drawing and throwing them. That seems pretty powerful. I like that better than the cleaver. Too bad I can't afford it. We ran out of monies. All right. I, I, there's some fun stuff, but I don't think I'm going to buy anything. Alright, that's everything, right? Uh, we looked at that, we looked at that. 
Alter, oh yeah, this is the other one. So in this one, you can do the transmutation process. So we can pick uh, something basic like defend, and it shows the upgrade path um, that you can do. So it goes from a one cost to a zero cost, but it also drops the effectiveness. Instead of 15 block, you only get seven, but you also get reinforced for a round to improve your resistances. Or you can do a more straightforward upgrade. Cost stays the same, but the effectiveness goes up by three. Leap Slam doesn't have one. Wolf Guard doesn't have one. <laughs> Captain Zell doesn't have one. How about Helping Hand? That switches it to... What, you gain uh, Insane? Or Dispelling Insanity? Otherwise it stays the same? Hmm. I haven't hit too many enemies yet that have dealt with the insanity stuff. That dispels slow and shackle. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like. I don't think I like that one. Intercept. Really? That just increases the uh, the value. That increases the cost and more than doubles the actual intercept defense. Hmm. We do have quite a few uh, crystals. All right. I think what we're going to do, we're going to put an exit in here. Sure you want to exit? Current progress will be saved. Except... All right, that's all the time I've got right now to check out across the obelisk. We made it through the uh, the first map. Did pretty good. That one fight towards the end, the second from the last fight, worried me a bit. But uh, we managed to get a lucky healing in before the final fight. The final fight went easier than the, uh, the one before it, uh, which is normal. Well, somewhat normal, um, given the matchups that you get. So... Uh, I'm having some fun with Across the Obelisk. Uh, yeah, I have to see how the uh, how the co-op action works. So we'll see if we can talk some folks into uh, maybe trying it out co-op in the community server. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, so that's it for now. I will uh, probably be back a little bit later this afternoon. I got a few things I need to go out and do. So it'll depend about how long I take to get that done. So you might see me, you might not. Uh, but either way, thanks for hanging out, watching some uh, some gaming. With the warmer tracks and uh, stay safe out there.